observation. Shut the fuck up. Mirrorcat Mob. Mirrorcat Mob. Eat it. Kiss my fucking ass and lick my ball. Eat it. Fucking eat it. Oh, he's doing the meme. Oh, this is strange. Eat it. Eat it. Talk about my. I am fucking based. Lick my ball. Eat it. Fucking eat it. Shut the fuck up. Take your fucking ass and eat it. Don't eat it. Kiwi Farms. I want to have sex with your wife. On a daily fucking basis. Fills a racist. Fills a sexist. Fills this. Fills that. I am who I am. I am fucking based. Eat it. Kiss my fucking ass and lick my ball. Eat it. Fucking eat it. Oh, he's doing the meat. So, oh, this is strange. Dang. Eat it. Ain't no. Eat it. Eat it. I'm drinking. I'm fucking based. Eat it. Fucking eat it. You're a kid, mom. Shut the fuck up. I am who I am. Eat it. Eat it. And you social media trolls. Fuck all you hoes! Incredibly animated and emotional and upset because people on the internet tend to think that because, oh, a lot of people make fun of him and, and you know, call him a lol cow or whatever, that apparently I don't have the right to state facts. I'm tired of this fat fuck popping up in all my fucking search engines when I'm looking for a fucking workout I have workout to curate video. my content that about the aftermath from any of you boogie fans that feel sorry for this greasy fuck. Mirkhead Mom. Oh. Oh. Cheese drinking, ass smelling, crystal bathing, lard gargling, calorie eating, blah, big battle scorching, wide low, hungry, hungry hippo, yoga zoo, whale, slash free willy, you fat fucking disgusting fuck. Cheese drinking, let me tell you something, brother. Ass smelling, I wanna have sex. Father, crystal bathing. I know there's gonna be a lot of people out there calling me a bully. Well, guess what? I'm not. I just I don't have sex with your wife. Fat fucking people, especially fat fucks who sit there all day, gorge and eat, and make money for doing absolutely nothing. Baller alert. Calling out baller alert. Mirror Ball. that ass, man. Alright, one more, one more. One more, one more. Hey, 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 hey. Mark my fucking words. I'm coming for you. The champ is here. You motherfucker. You are fucked. Oh, we got another one. This one, bitches. Mark my fucking words. Coming for you. You are fucked, and you are done. I'm coming for you. Coming for you. I'm coming for you. Sound good? Coming for you. Fair enough. Coming for you. All right. Please talk about boys. So I'm looking. Please talk about punk ass bitches. I'm looking. 40, 50, 65 boys from the bottom. 30, 40, 50, ass busters. Ain't no clapback videos. Why? What is it that serious? But I need boys. Please, the creator. Bless me, but I need boys. Please allow my boy sperms to go fast and shoot fast enough. Go fast enough. Please. 
please the creator, please bless me. Please. Mark my fucking words. I'm coming for you. Bloodshed and bullets. You are fucked. And you are dumb. I'm coming for you. They all so dumb. 30, 40, 50, punk ass bitches. I'm the one. Baller alert, calling out baller alert. Got no problems with baller alert, but everybody on baller alert and anybody else out there talking shit about me, here we go. There may be some gunfire. There may be some gunfire. Might be some gunfire. Welcome everybody, it's the Swaycast 13? 13! There we go. And uh, today you're gonna be shocked because you're never gonna guess what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be watching Dark Side Phil's podcast, and I'm gonna sit here and make fun of everything he does. Ah, oh, that's crazy. Uh, first of all, sorry about last time. My internet got cut off by the ISP. They had some kind of an issue. I talked to them on the phone. They fixed it today. So we should be back on track. Uh, a quick shout out to myself. Uh, we got... Uh, we got the Gin Instrumentals. This is an instrumental album of 35 songs. And there, there's some new, like, semi-new stuff. The TBS intro theme song is on there. Uh, that album has now hit the streaming services. So if you want to go check it out, please be my guest. Songwhip.com slash Snortwave Records. Also, since I just played the, the Pastor Miller song, we got a Pastor Miller update. And you would never guess, guys. He still hates his wife because his latest video is called Bro, I Still Hate My Wife. Why are Christians habitual line steppers? And then why Christians never grow? Oh, well, I guess I, I guess I, I, he doesn't grow. But anyways, it's nice to get an update from the guy every once in a while, because as you know, he's very close to my heart. Uh, I hold Jesus very close to me and my soul. And I'm a firm believer in um, whatever this guy is preaching. I'm buying anything. It's nice to see that in the past year, ever since he had his little meltdown, he has grown by 10 subscribers. Congratulations, Eric. Anyways, we're going to start today with a little bit of a recap from the last couple of days. Um, I, I'm going to go back to the day where my internet cut off and, I guess, finish up that podcast. And here we got some, as you can see, the guy is, is dressed up as if he's uh, going to the retirement home and not intending on leaving. And um, he did the suggestion box again. So I might actually listen to that because you know how much I love constructive criticism in long form. It's fantastic content. Uh, but first, let's watch some quick clips. Um, here we got from yesterday... Apparently he fell asleep again playing Yakuza game. I'm not I'm not sure, but I, I guess Hate Army says so, so if that's not true, then he is a liar. A damn dirty detracting liar. Uh so let's check this one out. As you guys know, I love when he falls asleep on stream because that's for me what a chill stream looks like. That's a true and honest chill stream. When the guy is so fucking chill that he just falls asleep. That's how you chill. Oh, first, um, <clears throat> nice voice crack there. Uh, I wanted to show you something from the from the new channel, uh, the DSP Throwback, and it's it's fucking fantastic, man. So this is shout out to Ann Leet for posting this, but many other people posted it. Um, as you can see, this is the new, I guess, intro for the channel, and take three seconds to notice if there's something wrong. One two three well this one says dsp throwback where the past meets the play trough the play trough this dude has a fucking typo in his intro that somebody else did he couldn't even vibe check the intro he couldn't even like actually check the spelling this guy is incredible man the quality control is off the charts incredible stuff so shout out for everybody that made a bunch of noise about this one. Uh, in other news, Drake showed everybody his cock. 
Uh, and uh, a bunch of grown-ass men were thirsting over him and simping over him, which is something that I did not expect. Uh, but I'm definitely not uh, surprised by. What else we got? We got nothing else on Twitter. Nothing else happened. So let's go watch him <laughs> tweak. <laughs> so this is called DSP Tweaks and once again falls asleep during a Yakuza cutscene. So as you guys know, I'm a big fan of tweaking. I'm a big fan of falling asleep on stream. So this should hit the spot. An option. Man, I never want to see a cop again. True, you're still a wanted man. Maybe leave the- Oh, and this is- Dude, this is the, the, the young maniac voice acting. Hell yeah, I love that. I love that. You can hear him in the background. That's why he's having so much fun and chilling and falling asleep. Because you're listening to the youngster. Mm, guys, you gotta realize Roman's gonna flag this as a risk. And he's a greedier jerk off than me. <laughs> he's so fucking bored, man. It's incredible. I, I mean chill. I don't mean bored. I mean he's chill. That's that's him being chill. Please don't bring him in. And besides, there's no way you can afford it. Is it clear you're wasting your time yet? No. I'd say this is our chance. Why? <laughs> you have a Wait, hold on. Now you can like super chats? What the fuck does that even mean? What is YouTube even doing? What? Dude, Susan. What what <laughs> Oh my god. Anyways, uh big ups. It's going to play in a second. No, everything is negotiable. That's all. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this dude legitimately only adds goat laughs. I mean, not even saying anything. It's just, Bleh. yeah. Bleh. Well, I don't know who you think you are, but what's the harm in trying? But it's like, this isn't this like 8 p.m. his time? How the fuck are you falling asleep at 8 p.m.? Something when I see a main peanut saw. Oh, yeah. When it, uh, that's, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's what happened to Drake. A bunch of grown-ass dudes were like this on Twitter. Let me tell you something, brother. When I hold a man's penis, I tell you what I do. I hold on to a tight, brother. <laughs> they were like discussing how flaccid it was and how big it would be if it was hard. That's the, that's the high-quality discussions happening on Twitter today. And also people talking about Taylor Swift taking a, notice this, 11-minute flight. Uh, but then they tell everybody else to uh, protect the environment. Very nice. Very quality. He drinks every night at Diamond Head, a bar by District 5. We Akamai now? Sure. Akamai? I don't know what that means. Hey, we really doing Some this? Some kind of dialect from Hawaii. We Akamai now. Oh, man. Hey, guys, could you hold up a second? Why? Something wrong. And he also apparently talked about them having a meal after dinner, you know, the late night snack. But I missed out on that, man. I've I've been missing out on a bunch of stuff the last two days. Uh, so I guess I mean this is it. What is happening here for eleven minutes? Is all of this just a cutscene and the dude just struggling to to, to stay awake? <laughs> this is very weird. Ex excuse me, it's very chill. That's what I mean. It's extremely chill, matter of fact. Um, anyways. Uh, there was also another cool segment, which was, um, yeah, <laughs> chat was once again bullying Derek. I wonder why. There was no reason why anybody would bully this guy. Do you think guy. he falls asleep for being bored or does he do that to show us? I work so hard, dude. I'm falling asleep because I'm too tired. No, I think, I think his body is just worn out, man. Uh, I, all this fucking drinking, all this trash food, staying up in the middle of the night playing mobile games. It's just like... His body is just so decrepit and just falling apart. I would be falling asleep too. He is a 65-year-old in a 40-year-old's body, technically. Uh, or at least a 65-year-old that's been living for 40 years is how I would put it. Because it's like, man. And on top of that, you'll add all the other stress that is mostly self-inflicted. Because, I mean, that's kind of what happens when you're so resistant of getting a fucking job. So you gotta rely on people like Canadian Kirk that just get banned every day in your chat and you need to make them stick around because they give you $10 every once in a while. And that shit pays the bills. So yeah, I, I don't blame him for falling asleep. I don't blame him. I mean, I do because that it's kind of his job not to fall asleep and when he falls asleep on stream, he is failing. 
How do oh, I know here. if I have it? Key item. Also, uh, what I heard was uh, right after this message. His dare Oxberg was also fantastic. Imagine a day SP cork pick with dent reactions. No. Nope. OP boon and Oishi's dream. Hello, boyfriend. We're not. No, we're not. Because I know what's going to happen, right? This pick is going to drop and everybody's going to be analyzing the shit out of it. Because that's what people do with the DSP stuff. But there's going to be people like zooming in on the foreskin being like, oh, do you guys think he's circumcised or not? How and if we're going to have people like doing like digital measurements of how big it is and shit. It's we don't want that. I sure hope this never happens. Never. Uh, but what I heard was that he was salty that you can't name the Pokemon in this game because he desperately wants to make this a new gimmick because he did it when uh, he was playing Pokemon. So yeah, uh, it, it's very positive. I have it. Okay, cool. I also want the grapple gun, but I need Paldium to get that. So what did Derek first say? So he said, good evening, DSP Gaming. I'm a little late. I almost forgot. What did he forget? To clock into a DSP stream that happens every day at the same time? Just got home from driving around my neighborhood. Oh, he's looking for victims. Oh, man. How's pa Pal World going? Paldium over here? Yeah, you can nickname them, I guess, but uh, I think not on console. I think it only works on PC or something. I don't know. That's what I heard, you guys. It's just a rumor. Hey, guys, could you shut the fuck up? What did they say? Let's read a couple messages. So, uh, Reese Tipney, which is clearly not a troll, Reese Tipney says the spammer is here. Then, the lucky gremlin says. Bill gave you all the advice on weight loss. And um, what was that other I'm message? Because I can't see it from this. I mean it right now. The moment someone comes in, you... Oh, somebody asked him if he's a part of the neighborhood watch. But it's like, it's at most two people that said something even remotely negative to Derek. And he got to go full on dick riding mode. He got to go defense mode. Why? Start like, bleeding. Phil... Phil, you literally know why those people are making fun of Derek. And it's not just because of the porn, it's because of those playlists of little kids. And it and also the porn. But it's like you going out of your way to defend this guy. No, that's not good for you. This guy and Canadian Kirk, they need to be sent to Siberia. Or or the you know, the Siberian equivalent of DSP chat. So, I mean, you gotta ban them. Them. How about every time I see someone bully someone, I just ban you permanently? How would you like that? So either if you don't like someone and you feel like bullying them, shut the fuck up and stop and don't do it. Because if I see you, I'm going to instantly ban you. Here I am <laughs> trying to do a relaxing stream and I got to watch. <laughs> That's such a proverb, man. If you feel, if you ever feel like bullying somebody, shut the fuck up and stop it and just don't do it. Sure. I'm Everyone convinced. Yeah, start bullying people. Fuck you. Grow up or leave. Messed up shit. Okay. So what was I doing? I was making the grapple gun. Hey guys, could you shut the fuck up? And stop being negative to other chatters? I mean it right now. Why? The what if they deserve it though? What if Canadian Kirk deserves it because he's an asshole? What if Derek deserves it because he fucking spams and is an ob obnoxious piece of shit? And even though DSP himself has told him multiple times to stop spamming, he never stops spamming. So he clearly doesn't get the message. I think it's time for a little bit of bullying. Bullying is uh, constructive. The moment someone if done in the proper way. Becomes doink for the subscription ship, dude. Oh, let me check if I have some more free gifted memberships to give out. Because I think I have five. Yeah, I have five more. Because I remember I gave away the first five and then I forgot. So here's five gifted memberships. Uh, don't get too excited. I don't get paid for them. They're fake. But they're real. But they're fake. Then you already start bullying them? How about- But they're real. Every time I see someone bully someone, I just ban you permanently. How would you like that? So either if you don't like someone and you feel like bullying them, shut the fuck up and stop and don't do it. Because if I see I'm going to instantly ban you. Here I am- But what if I really want to do it, though? Watch everyone in the chat start bullying people. Fuck you. Grow up or leave. Messed up shit. And that's why everybody left. 
Because he, like, I don't know why this guy loves to tell people to leave and then cries about views and uh, in engagement. Stop telling people to leave because they might just leave. And then you're going to be doing whatever the fuck you're doing. Um, so Tekken 8. Tekken 8 was very slow. Like, actually very slow. And he's been looking for input. Uh, and he's been looking for feedback. And as you know, feedback for him is basically telling him what to do that's going to make him the most money. And not not just that, he also needs to to recognize that as valid and viable. So it's a very steep hill to climb to begin with. So you, you just basically don't want to give this guy feedback, to be honest. You just don't even want to try. Uh, but let's see what happens if you try. Uh, I'm going to try and look up the suggestion style box. Only he's allowed to be in Butterfly. Only he's allowed to bully. Only he's allowed to do whatever he wants. Nobody tells me how to live. DSP's brain cells in a nutshell. He should have sex with his wife on Valentine's Day, by the way. <laughs> uh, well, look, he doesn't have to. It's not, it, there's no law about it. Um, and I mean, he probably won't. Because uh, then again, that's the same guy who forgot his uh, anniversary to his soulmate. So there you go. But yeah, only he can say whatever because it's his stream, dude. I think there was a suggestion box segment. Uh, big ups, Mr. Dilf Kane, by the way, for the tip. I think there was a suggestion box segment. Am I fucking gaslighting myself? I'm sure there was. Yesterday or the day before. I don't know, bro. Yesterday and almost every question didn't really... Okay, let's start watching this. I'm going to skip through a bunch of trash if I need to. And I'm not sitting through the whole uh, Xbox segment because that shit is whack. And I listened to it the other day and it's still going to be the same thing. Apply to what we were doing. By the way, it's bothering me. Again, I seem to have not... I'm not centered on camera. And I'm wondering why. Like, should I physically move myself or should I turn How the camera? How is he not centered? Like, it looks like... Is it centered now? Better. But even then, I'm still not centered, right? Like, it looks like I'm still off. I'm, uh, this is me perfectly leaning back in the chair, lined up with the camera. Bro, this is really weird about him, is that he's going to nitpick stuff like this and pretend like he has some kind of weird OCD about it. But at the same time, you look at all of his processes and his whole business and the way this stream looks and his background and everything, and it's like the most low effort the most like bootleg throwaway Romanian flea market looking ass shit you've ever seen. And it's like, how, how do we have this weird OCD with some things, but completely lack of with everything else? And it looks like I'm still slightly to the right. <laughs> it still uh, looks like that because your head is shaped weirdly and it's all completely fucked up and also your hairline. So don't even try. Like, no matter what I do, I mean, I'm not... Like, like, look at him. When he looks right in front of the camera, like, right into the camera, Centered. his hairline is just so bent. In this setup. How about now? Nah, I'm still... Uh, whatever. I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay. So. Anyway. um, So, yesterday, we had a good podcast, and then we jumped into the first... Big ups, uh, Infinite Beak now, for the membership, dude. The idea for Tekken 8 was that I was going to learn a new character, but... In order for me to learn a new character in a fighting game, it's not as simple as pick the character, go into training mode. Oh, this is getting mega skipped. This is getting like uber skipped. Basically, is just another segment of him asking for support and wondering why there isn't support and explaining to you how he played a game and whether or not it was good or not. That's basically it. Dropping Tekken. No, because I'm not dropping Tekken. I like there Tekken. We go. I'm going to keep playing Tekken. He's going to keep playing it, but he wants you to show up and pay him so he can keep playing it and be happy. This is it. This is as, as much as this. As, that's all it is. Okay? But here's the decision that we have to come to. All right? Okay, let's hear that at least. I'm not going to be playing Tekken 8 as much as Street Fighter 6. I can't. Why? Because number one, right now there's a lot of other games going on that I need to continue to make progress in. And if I play as much Tekken as I did Street Fighter VI, um, I won't make the progress in those games that I need to. All right? So that's just being matter of fact. But number two, Tekken is not getting as many views, attention, or support as Street Fighter VI. There we did. go. 
So because of that, I well, just of can't. course. I mean, come on. Street Fighter is his whole fucking legacy. Is he expecting that he would get the same amount of support? Give me a fucking break. Hey, big ups, uh, Dorzak, for 13 months, dude, and a bunch of heart emotes. I love you too, my guy. Let me give you a kiss. I can't play it more often. I can't be playing it four or five times a week like I was doing with Street Fighter VI. It, I, it, it wouldn't support the business. You understand? It, it wouldn't, wouldn't support the business. And yesterday, <laughs> I barely hit the tier one goal for tips, and everything else was slow as hell. Like, basically, it was like, wow, I'm doing a daytime stream of Tekken, thinking that it's going to bring in more viewers, and it actually kind of did the opposite. Like, I probably would have done better playing any other game. And I'm like, wow, I'm, su I'm surprised at this. I am. I'm definitely surprised at this. Um, I just, it confuses me because, again, the vibe that I was getting from my audience for months was we're getting bored of Street Fighter Six. We can't wait for Tekken Eight because we yeah like yeah Street yeah. Six, so we want to see that in another different fighting yeah. game franchise. Bro, don't. No. So no. that's exactly what I'm giving you, but definitely the attention's not there for it. All right. So my question is, how do I approach moving forward in Tekken with all of this being the case? And here's the two scenarios. Number one, I play the game more casually, and what I mean by that is. I take maybe like once a week, I pick a new character. And this is just schizophrenia from this point on. So I'm going to skip until uh, a segment that is worth watching, I guess. Play it in a way that entertains people, okay? So please, feedback needed. So I, because this- Hey, there we go. I skipped like 10 minutes and he still needs feedback about the exact same thing. Friday, I'm playing it again. Friday Night Fights. So the question is, Am I focusing in on King and doing a King stream to, on Friday night? King stream, the King of Hate. Videos, watch some matchups. The King of King. Watch like a, a video that maybe we'll do tutorial about how he punishes uh, unsafe moves. Yeah. And no. Then try to get better with him. Is that what I'm doing? Like, bro, bro, all he has to do is just have fun with a video game. That's actually all he has to do. But he thinks is this like 4D chess, this big flow chart thing that's. Depending on what he does, he's going to get different levels of support. No, just show up to stream, play the video game, have fun, and be entertaining for your audience. And that's all you got to do. And if they like it, they're going to support you. And if they don't, you got to get a new job. And you probably should get a new job regardless. Or am I going to pick a new character, study up on them, and try someone from scratch on Friday? Yeah, and th there's this whole new narrative of him studying off stream. Which is, by the way, just looking up YouTube videos. You don't get to learn shit like that figure out so but he thinks he does because he he's got like uh dunning kruger syndrome well, please give me feedback i keep telling you guys feedback is essential i get a lot of feedback from this uh, this live audience i don't get a lot of feedback from you guys who are on-demand viewers for whatever reason a lot of the times i ask for feedback on these videos and i get like next to none and it's like well then i, I just got to make a decision best from what the feedback i got but i want to be sure i'm doing the right things for everyone my uh, my viewer audience here on demand versus live i understand that they're different audiences you know a lot of you guys who watch me on demand are people who are long time oh there we go again years and years some of you only watch the podcast and then only watch gameplay when it's your cup of tea a lot of people come back to the channel for the first time in months when a game is out that they're interested in i think a lot of people will come back when i start final fantasy 7 rebirth and then <laughs> later this year there'll be more action oriented games and more people will come back for those as well right so yeah i mean that's what i'm thinking and I need your feedback about what, uh, how to cover this stuff, okay? Really. Um, so please. And it, it still blows my mind that after 15 years, he doesn't know what's best for his business. Because he does something until it completely makes him no money. And Because that's the thing. That's the thing that is so fascinating about him. He's going to do one thing. Let's say playing Elden Ring. And he's going to play Elden Ring day one. He's going to make a lot of money. Then we start the diminishing returns. And like two weeks later, he's going to be playing Elden Ring still and getting 10% of the, the money that he would originally get. And then he would turn to his viewers and be like, well, dudes, I'm playing the game that used to get a lot of support. Why is it not getting support? It's like, bro. You, oh, my God. You, you, you can't tell. What is good for you? What is good for your audience? You don't know your audience? The first Tekken 8 balance patch came out. 
So plan on building up as much skip juice as possible today. Oh man. He's asking for advice from 300 view videos acting like he's going to change anything because of them. Yeah. And most of those people, because people nowadays, they don't really sit there and watch hour-long videos. They don't really do that anymore. They just play stuff in the background. Unless your hour-long video is really good and very well put together, most people just don't have an hour to just sit there and look at YouTube. So his videos, I believe most people just play in the background while they're doing some work or something. As somebody who just rambles in the background just to, to fill in the, the empty space. So there's something talking. So you don't just sit in silence. And he's act asking for feedback from a bunch of people that don't even fucking probably know what he was talking about. They just kind of sat through the video automatically, not paying attention to it. And then they just moved on to the next thing. And he thinks that they sit there and actually watch his gameplay. Like actually watch... Tens of hours of gameplay and pay attention to it. Please offer that up. I want that info, okay? Really, I need it because... The good segment and toxicity is about to appear. All right. Watch, mate. I'm, I'm going to trust you on this one. I'm just stumped right now. I'm, I'm looking at the videos. I'm like, wow, what a great set of Paul gameplay yesterday. I really hope that I please my audience because I really worked hard to get better with that character. Really? And I look at the views. It's like, what happened? Like, no one's watching these videos at all. Like, what the hell happened here? I don't know. Oh, and now we're complaining about views. And we get this face. This is the post lobotomy face. This is a, you just got home from a lobotomy procedure. And this is how you look. If I'm getting more <laughs> views, <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. Based RPG playthroughs, then my action based fighting. Pick up uh, Shadow Ouija for <laughs> the 11 see? months, dude. I really feel like, like, what is going on? So let me know what's going on. Fair enough? <clears throat> Sounds okay. good. Um, cool. So there you go. Um, just want to make sure I, there's nothing else attacking that I didn't touch upon. No, I think I just touched upon everything I wanted to talk about. Okay. <laughs> there was, by the way, because nowadays, uh, nowadays you get to see people's channel activity if you're a mod. So you just click on their name and you get to see their activity. There was somebody in my chat earlier whose entire activity in my chat is, and it's the first time I noticed them today. Their entire activity was just calling me gay. And talking about different scenarios of me having sex with men. I was very fascinating. I should just have uh, let him fly and not ban him. But I banned him instead. Because he's fucking toxic. I'm not gay, you idiot. I have a fucking soulmate. Last night, we played Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. The good news it was is... Like a, it was an actual, like, an Eric Miller type of guy. It was just imagining me getting fucked up by guys. Making solid <laughs> progress. We beat Chapter 3. We got into Chapter 4. Chapter 4 is heavy story. And basically the entire chapter is this story that takes place in a part of Hawaii called District 5. Which is supposed to be the secret underground uh, town or city that is like like run by, by crime. Um, and we're doing good. We're making good progress. From what I want to understand, maybe I might beat that on Wednesday night when we play again. And then when we play it again on Saturday during my Super Bowl marathon event, I might get to the point where you can unlock jobs. And one of the jobs you can do is an NFL football player. So how cool would it be if on Saturday we get to the job systems and I can get the NFL player and just play as the NFL player during the event? That would be really cool and tie in, obviously, with the Super Bowl theme. So that's what I'm hoping we'll do. I guess we'll have to see how far we get uh, tomorrow night uh, and go from there. Now, ultimately, my goal is to unlock the Dondoko Island, which is essentially this. This dude, like I said in the previous stream that got taken down, I've never seen him this excited to get a job. But then you start thinking, and it's like, oh, it's a video game job. There you go. Animal Crossing style minigame by Valentine's Day. I don't know if I'll do that. That unlocks in the <laughs> beginning of chapter six. So now, yeah, I, I just remembered. His gimmick is that he's going to have the Super Bowl event on the 10th, right? So he's going to have an event this Saturday where he's going to milk the shit out of the pay pigs. And then four days later... He's going to have a special family event with Fat Cat where they're going to play the Animal Crossing game and he's going to milk the shit out of the dents yet again. So this guy is in full overdrive scammer mode and he's not giving up. He still thinks those motherfuckers have infinite money, like actual infinite funds to give to a fucking streamer on the internet. It's wild. We'll be hitting chapter five on Saturday. So it really depends how far do we get on Saturday. 
I'll probably play it like again on Sunday night and then maybe even again on Tuesday night and hopefully between all those nights. Dude, play, I, I've never seen this happen before. So for a moment, look at his chat. Uh, there hasn't been a single message since I started streaming 35 minutes ago and not even before that. But now the first time I've ever seen this is DSP being the first one to make a message in his chat. Say good morning. Because usually there's a couple of messages in, in chat, you know, people warming up and waiting for the stream to start. This is the first time I've ever noticed DSP being the first one to make a chat message. I'll unlock it. And then when we play, I it's can a play little bit quiet in here, huh? For the first time ever right here, co-op Don Doko Island Family Night, which will be really neat. First co-op gameplay we've ever done together. I can't wait to do some stuff with Cat. We've wanted to do gameplay for a while, and this is exactly what we want to do. I got to unlock it, though, okay? <clears throat> so there you go. Um, there you go. What I love is when you get idiotic things said like this. <laughs> What I love is when a toxic ass segment starts like this. So let's let's see what the idiotic thing was. Try and lock in your pick. Let's see. Let's see what I think is gonna be. Oh, uh, I can't even tell at this point, man. I, I can't even tell. It could have been anything. But try and make a prediction. Let's see if it's gonna be it. I'm gonna say. Um somebody told him that he talks too much and he should be playing games instead. And that that's how he's gonna get to the point where he wants to get in the game faster. Let's see this. He says, it's you, it's not the game. Oh, so that's why when I was playing Street Fighter 6, <laughs> there's tons of attention and views, and now when I'm playing Tekken 8, there's not. Yeah, but but Street Fighter is all you're known for. It's like the one thing that you've e ever been known for outside of masturbating, and there aren't any masturbation games that you're playing. So yeah, Street Fighter is going to get a lot of views. No shit. Especially when it's a hot new Street Fighter game, and it's gonna be basically the fighting game of the year. Why? Are you, why are you so surprised? You're not known for fucking Tekken. Because it's me playing it. That makes no fucking sense. You're He's known for Tekken the piss. The a terrible joke. I told you. Hey, yeah, you, you did. Let's uh, let's keep going. Maybe this is gonna get better. You're an idiot. Bye bye. Oh, you're an idiot. I love this dunce level stuff like that. Completely worthless feedback, not constructive at all, just moronic stuff that some idiot says because they don't like me. Yeah, but it's true. They don't like you for a reason. And now there's going to be more people that don't like you just because you react to stuff like this. Um, but he's not a dunce, by the way. Very high IQ. Anyway, continuing on positive. Because this is, this is a 41-year-old man, but you should talk to him like he's 10. Otherwise, he's going to take your words out of context or spin them around or misrepresent or straight up misunderstand what you said and just shit on you and call you a dunce. Um, so, yeah, last night's stream and Like a Dragon, I had a great time, great progress, chill vibe. Can't wait to play it again tomorrow night. Okay? Cool. Today, we're back to Baldur's Gate 3. In Baldur's Gate 3, we've been thoroughly investigating Act 2. You know, first we I'm going to be thoroughly investigating the skip button. Oh, dude, ho hold on. Hold, hold, hold on. Now is the first time I ever noticed this. We're 36 minutes into this podcast, and he is still doing the recap from yesterday. 36 minutes. Feels to me like it's Minecraft. It What? I'm enjoying the game every time I play it. What is it, Power World? <clears throat> So I can't wait to play it again. What's funny is some people are saying it's Ark. I've never played Ark. It feels to me like it's Minecraft. It totally does. Like that feels that that's the game to me. It's Minecraft, but they also added in this combat with capturing and, and training and oh. leveling up and riding creatures. So it's Minecraft, but also a lot different. But it's Minecraft. So any game that has mining and crafting has to be Minecraft. Right? Obviously. So there you go. There you go. That's exactly how it is. Somebody asked him something. So I can't wait to play it again. For that tonight, game for like level is we learned how to ride pals. Excuse me. They're totally not Pokemon. There's no way anyone could actually beat it because now I'm probably going to do like double the damage I was doing. I'm a lot more maneuverable. I feel like I could do that, but let's see what happens. All right, let's let's play tonight. Let's see where the game takes us and maybe we can go back and do the first boss, which would be really neat to finally get that done. Okay. Well, I'm only seven hours into Pal World. 
<clears throat> no wonder I haven't beaten the first boss yet. Right? Like, I swear we were like over a dozen hours. You should definitely... That, that game can stick around for a long time as a late night chill stream if he can figure out how to monetize it. And I mean like heavy monetize it. Like the fishing streams had the dunce lures. The Pokemon streams had the naming your Pokemon gimmick. He needs to monetize something so the children can pay him money. And he can do something super bare minimum in the game. But he needs to f figure that out. It, it can't be the good old name a Pokemon gimmick. You need something else. And I'm not even close. So there you go. Um. So anyway, yes, see you tonight for that. That should be a good time. Now tomorrow it'll be more uh, Baldur's Gate 3. And I, I could probably have some ideas um, if, if I actually played the game, but I, I don't, so I don't know. Progress on the first stream, and on the late stream it will be... Uh, and I'll have some props and silly things with me. Um, we're going to do... Many events. Number one. Many events. It's going to be booze. What will it be? I don't know. I'm going to go to the liquor store this year, this week. I can't spend a lot of money right now because things are going to be tight for me for like the next month to two months. Bro, what are we, what are we actually talking about? Alcohol. You can get a bottle of alcohol that's going to get you in a fucking coma for less than $15. What are we fucking talking about? Is he so broke? Is he that broke? Or are we just feigning distress again? So he can look more broke than what he actually is. Because he's fucking not. He made a couple of, of streams in the last few days that made over $100. You can't buy a bottle of alcohol. You can't get some vodka, some tequila, some rum, and do like a rum and coke or something like that. Because I know he loves rum and coke. He loves gin and tonic. He doesn't have to get a huge handle. He doesn't have a huge jug of alcohol. Just get like something that's going to get you through the event. Like what the fuck is wrong with you? due to the trolling that I've been under uh, with these, these fake memberships. But we'll see what happens there. Uh, hopefully I can get something. Maybe I'll find some beer or something. We'll see what I can find, okay? So, yes, I'm going to be drinking. I'm going to be doing many different things. Number one, we're going to do a simulated Super Bowl match, the Kansas City Chiefs versus the San Francisco 49ers, and it's going to be in Madden 24, the newest one. So that's really cool. Wow, epic. Match and see with the new rosters and everything updated, who does Madden think is going to win the game? Well, we're going to do a sim. It'll probably take about 45 minutes, I would think, to sim it. And let's see what Madden thinks. Depends on how long he he makes it, I In guess. In addition to that, we are going to have a segment of Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. As I stated, my goal is to possibly get into Chapter 5 to the job systems and hopefully unlock the football player job. And now we can play as an NFL player during the Super Bowl Bash Marathon and beat people up in the streets. I think that would be pretty darn fun, actually. <clears throat> what? what? Uh... Unlock the football player job. And... So he's going to become a football player in a video game and beat people up in the, in the streets. <laughs> That's his idea of an exciting special event. And he's going to feel entitled to at least $300 because it's a special event. I mean, of course. He talks about $30 gin like it's $400 aged Kongak. Right? Right? He talks about it like he needs to spend like $100 on alcohol when nobody's making them. He can just spend like $10, $15 on, on some generic shitty ass alcohol and take a couple shots. Because he's not going to take more than three shots anyways. Even if he gets paid for them, he's not going to take them. Now we can play as an NFL player during the Super Bowl Bash Marathon and beat people up in the streets. I think that would be pretty darn fun, actually. Yeah, yeah. now we're creating some fake-ass excitement. Which makes me think about, I want to look up the, the Total Wine website. Total Wine. Let's see if they got, um, what do they actually have? Now, let's look up vodka. Let's look up, um, uh, let's look up tequila. What do they have that's super, like, bare minimum type tequila? We got 39, 29. What's the least we can get? Sort by price. Lowest first. Well. Oh yeah, this is a 50 milliliter. This is like a like a shot. 99 cents. We can do that. Jose Cuervo special, 50 milliliter. That's a 99. Uh 199. Okay, so let's uh let's go on to more expensive ones. Come on. We're not that broke. We're not that broke. But he can get... Oh, this is another 50. So, here we got... Jose Cuervo Gold. 750 for $12.99. $12! I mean, come on! 
and you're gonna take like what three shots and the let uh, the rest is gonna be left over for another time 12 dollars. here we got 12 13 14 15 and he's acting like he's gonna buy some limited edition like 50 year old whiskey or something <clears throat> so yeah that'll be pretty neat all right i hope that that will that will be cool all right and uh in addition to that, I want to do some other gameplay. I'm strongly leaning towards Modern Warfare 3. Reason being, Modern Warfare 3 gets an update. But the thing is, you know, he's a, he's an alcoholic. He can tell if something is trash. He can tell if it's bad alcohol. He doesn't want to do that. He wants the good stuff. And yeah, that's a good point, Kate Army. Uh, one Minute Man chips in his daily $25 every single day. He buys him more than a bottle of well, whatever any given day. Tomorrow... And that update is supposed to add new maps and things for the new season. And I was like, well, that would be a great opportunity. I'm already going to be buzzed. Why not jump into Modern Warfare 3 for the first time in many weeks and just have a... And now, now he just assumes that he's going to be buzzed, which I don't think is guaranteed unless... Well, uh, unless he's already counting money that he doesn't have. ...individual shots, bottles, and literally spend under $10. That's $500 worth to him as well. Yeah, well, that is true, but he doesn't do that, I guess. So, yeah. The online, you know, for FPS session. It's kind of a thing. <laughs> he has some really weird ways of doing stuff where... I, I don't know how to call it. He's just so stuck in his ways. He can't do it differently. Otherwise, uh, even though doing it differently is just much easier. Like, he's already set his mind on buying a big bottle of alcohol or like a handle of alcohol he doesn't need to do it nobody tells him to do it i just don't know how to like it's it's weird it's like the podcast must be 90 minutes long it must be it can it can't not be i think that could be pretty fun okay now there's also going to be food my wife is going to be making multiple kinds of super bowl snacks meaning she's going to go online and find recipes for these kind of snacks and things, and like she's gonna make them herself. So it's not just let's gonna get be educated. Like you would buy at the store. It's gonna be something like more better homemade. Super Bowl and I'm snacks. What she's gonna make because we've talked about there we go. dips and quesadillas. This is thepioneerwoman.com. Uh, what do we got for Super Bowl snacks? We got potato skins. Uh, I don't think she's making those. Salsa that looks too healthy. We're not eating those. Air fryer taquitos. I think that's going to be it, my hermano. That's going to be it. I'm going to be having taquitos. Uh, then we got chicken sliders. She might make some of those because they're easy to make and they look fucking nice. Football cookies. Probably not because this looks like something that you would eat out of a certain place from with a spoon. You know what I mean? Uh, ham and cheese pinwheels. That might happen. Air... <laughs> Air... <laughs> <laughs> air fryer fried pickles uh, i'm laughing at this but this sounds like a low-key banger if you got some garlic sauce this this uh looks pretty nice cheese fries classic bacon ranch dip classic haven't tried it yet puppy chow classic haven't tried it yet garlic knots i i actually don't know and popcorn chicken she might make some popcorn chicken or some cowboy caviar look at this cowboy style caviar I don't know Delicious. If she's exactly doing those or not. I'm curious to see what ideas she finds. I know she's going to start looking for that today, and then probably tomorrow we'll solidify what it is so I can buy the ingredients oh, when I go out. I think Phil would turn into only use May Blade if people threw enough money to him. No, dude, because people have thrown enough money in the past, but he finds a reason why not to drink. Like, he did this on... Oh, I keep forgetting. The one where he had this space... space-themed... Uh, Bernal breastfeed the uh, guard until college. Uh, what was it? The, the space-themed cocktail. And he drank that, and people paid him for fucking shots, and he didn't take the shots. So no, he's not he, hes not really looking for a reason to drink. He's just dangling it in front of people's faces so they can give him money. And he's not upholding his own end of the bargain, which I don't respect. Because, you know, remember, I have uh, drank shots for likes before. Literal likes that have no value. I just did it because I wanted to have a gimmick. And I took like 10 shots and I fucking passed out. And the ending of that stream is very funny because I am quote unquote watching a Cyrax documentary. But meanwhile, I'm actually in the bathroom and I'm not doing very well.
but the the idea for a gimmick is to make things fun, not to scam money out of people. That's what I, I I'm really irritated about the the shit that he does. And then Ookbook the Black says Mom Burnell breastfed the regard until college. <laughs> well, I know she she fixed up his hair. I don't know about breastfeeding. Sounds like sounds like uh, that might be possible. But don't forget, he is half lactose intolerant, so he can only sip out of a single titty, just one. We can't do both titties, just one. On Thursday. <laughs> so yeah, deviled eggs are good, Greasy. I love deviled eggs. Maybe I should tell her to make some deviled eggs. I would love deviled eggs. Deviled anyway. eggs. Oh my god, that bathroom is gonna be smelling like Chernobyl, man. You don't want deviled eggs, Burnell. You don't want deviled eggs. Um, <clears throat> so. No. That's. The bathroom's gonna smell like the devil. What's gonna happen on Saturday? Now, I haven't mentioned this at all recently, but now it's time to start mentioning it, alright? Last month, I was very, very strongly negatively affected in the pocketbook what? by these trolls. <laughs> Wait, what? We have a random begging segment out of nowhere. During dur during the segment that's about the Super Bowl bash, what the fuck? <laughs> Why? Where did this come from? And now he's looking at the corner demon. It's like the corner demon is pointing a shotgun at him. Basically, giving away so many free memberships. All right? Are they free? I didn't get credit for any of those? Yeah, you, you did. Know, right now, I'm not even kidding. I, I I just looked last night on a whim. I was like, yeah. This is why people call him a fucking liar. I know. He didn't make as much money as he wanted to. Matter of fact, he made like 2% of what he wanted to make. But it's not like he didn't make any money. They weren't free memberships. And also, you know that he's the guy that always relies on semantics to weasel himself out of something that he said, but he didn't say exactly that. He said something different. And now he's using these specific terms that just make him look like a fucking liar. I wonder how many memberships we have on the channel. We have over 2,000 memberships on this channel right now. Baller alert. Out of those, less than 500 are valid paying members. Okay. So I went from a channel that in December had over 800 paying members down to a channel that doesn't even have 500 paying members. No, you didn't have 800 paying members, you rat-faced, greasy-ass, piece-of-shit weasel. No, he didn't, because a lot of those memberships were gifted, that were paid by somebody else, because he's making it seem like those individual people, each one of them was paying for their membership. Matter of fact, that is not true, and you can go and find it. You can just go and find it on video and prove that it's not true, because it's factually not true. He had like 100 to 150 gifted memberships. And he has a, around 300 that are individual people that are renewing their membership every month. So I want you to think about that. Why did that happen? Because the trolls gave them away for free. And so people who normally would have become a member are not. They already got no. People who maybe would have given out memberships. Let's give some memberships that are legit. They're not doing it. This is the thing. This is the hook. And this is the whole catch and the truth of the matter, in the bottom line of the truth of the matter of the fact, is that he is counting money that he claims he lost, when in fact, you don't know if he would ever get that money, right? Because he's thinking that in his mind, if those Argentinian memberships didn't exist, he would be sitting on a thousand real paid members, when there is nothing that indicates that that would be true, that that would actually happen. But he's pushing that narrative. So to convince you, to be more convincing that you should support. So he's just making up his own reality. Because I already have 2,000, you see? And this has very much hurt me financially, okay? Now, man No, actually it hasn't. Because how did he manage to pay his bills when he had 300 memberships? How did he manage to pay his bills when he had 500 memberships? It's almost like every time the member count goes up, his threshold of being able to pay his bills increases. Which doesn't really make sense if you have a set amount that you're going to spend on bills every month. That, that makes sense, right? Because I'm thinking about my bills. I can expect a certain amount that I'm going to pay in electricity, in water, in rent, in some other stuff. 
I, I know what to expect every month. And for him, it just goes up. It just goes up. And now he's trapped for cash for some reason. Any of you and he knows how much his... um, uh, How did you call that? How much his mortgage costs. He knows how much his electricity costs, or at least he can estimate it. He knows how much to expect in bills every single month. And now he's pretending like it's actually hurt him so much that he can barely pay his bills to the point where he can't even he can't even pay uh, for fucking a bottle of alcohol is this what i'm supposed to believe that this is it's so bad he can't even buy himself a bottle of alcohol that people are going to pay him $100 for him to take a shot out of yeah very convincing if you don't pay attention or think about it you were already going to buy a membership all right what I i've always wondered about something and I want to know if you thought of this. Each time he snorts, there's a lie either incoming or he just said it. Snorts are the indications of lies and greed. You know what? I, I've never thought about this. I'm going to start paying attention just because you brought my attention to, th to that thing. So I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. I'll, I'll try and notice. But I don't think it's necessarily true. I think he snorts kind of uh, passive aggressively. And if you watch the Reclusive and Renton video, which I, I would say is 100% like mandatory viewing for any detractor. Uh, and it's by one of my favorite detractors is Bas Baxter Zevchenko slash ProxyCon. You should definitely go watch that video. Uh, it's a three hour video you can put in the background. Super educational, super factual uh, and uh, scientific based. And in that video, he claims that snorting is a way for him to be passive aggressive with people just to kind of assert dominance sometimes, you know, because he knows people are annoyed by the snorts, but he keeps doing it because he's so stubborn and he knows he knows that the trolls hate the snorts. So he has a little bit more incentive to do it just to spite the trolls. So he's willing to hurt his own content just to make some troll somewhere a little bit salty i would ask is that if you have because if you haven't noticed whenever cat is on stream whenever he does something that is important there is zero snorts there's no throat clears there's no nothing have a free membership from one of these trolls if you could contribute in another way that would be great notably this event is coming up on saturday right if you tipped me during the event that would be amazing that would be great because there that we would go. help out a lot. So this is basically an unofficial begathon. It's uh, it, it's still a begathon. It's still him begging for money to compensate the money that he convinced himself that he lost from all the gifted memberships. But he's not calling it a begathon because he knows people make fun of that, and people have, um, big people. I'm talking Sir Moist level of people have talked about this and the begging events and he's really ashamed of doing it so now he needs to do it in a kind of a roundabout way not directly but you know you know and instead of calling the stream the effort to raise funds he's gonna call it the super bowl event where it would be nice if we can raise some funds basically when i get paid this month by youtube it's gonna be way less than it is usually okay like, by thousands of dollars because of this issue and I don't know what's going to happen in the next month when I got to pay all my bills. All right? What's going to happen? You'll still manage to pay your bills because you managed to pay your bills when you had 500 subs. You managed to pay your bills when you had 300. You always managed to pay your bills, didn't you? I'm not asking anyone to go crazy. I'm not asking anyone to dump tons of donations. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, donations? What are donations, Phil? I, I thought you make tips that are not donations in in charitable contributions which are not donations by the way uh now that i talked about fundraiser one of my favorite dsp gimmicks is that instead of calling an event a fundraiser he used to call them an uh, an event an effort to raise funds which is not a fundraiser by the way because we phrase it differently i'm saying if you were someone who maybe already was gonna get a membership and you got one for free, it'd be great if you could contribute in another way. Right now, what would help me is tips, because if you did do, say, a super chat, I won't see that until next month. 
it ain't going to help me in the next 30 to 60 days when I'm trying to pay bills. Right now, the tips are really the only way to help with that. Wait, 30 to 60 days. So we're paying next month's bills as well. Okay. Because, yeah, I, I don't know if you guys caught up to this, but there are now bi-monthly bills that he needs to pay. They're all new bills that just come out of existence. You know, bills are evolving. They're multiplying. We got new bills all over the place. The bills industry, it's more innovative than it's ever been. And much like Apple, we get new bills dropping every day that are just better than the previous ones. And he needs to pay all of them. Because obviously, he's the guy who pays all the bills. And now we get a snort. So, if you could, you know, please, if you could contribute in some way, and maybe the day to do it would be Saturday during... Oh, and we get a if we get a nice please. 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 In this big Super Bowl event, that would be really cool to have a big rallying of support yeah. on that day. It would be really co cool if I could raise some funds during the event that is not a fundraiser. All right. But it would be cool if it happened. But I'm not going to be harping on this. I'm not going to be bringing it up constantly. No, we're not going to do, oh, it's an emergency fundraiser you see? stream. With that's, that's what I'm talking about. It's not officially an emergency fundraising stream, but it would be nice if we could raise some funds because I'm going through an emergency right now. Giant thousand dollar goals. We're not doing that. I've been there, done that. I've learned from my past. Yes, I actually did streams like that in the past. I'm not proud of them. I did those streams when I was at my lowest. Bro, he's acting like he was sucking dicks for like $20, bro. <laughs> I'm not proud of it, but I was at my lowest. Like, what are you going to do, man? Where basically I had to do them because I was in a situation where I had absolutely no money because of bankruptcy and all this debt I was in. Luckily, I'm not there right now, okay? But I need to recover from this idiocy of what these people have done on YouTube. And what have they done? I'm they've they've given your community a bunch of benefits? I'm hoping that this is the first step towards it. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a good thing to start as a positive move towards recovery as opposed to... Bro, this dude's been recovering from, like, what, 2017? He's never gotten back to where he wanted to get back. It's always been, I'm gonna hope for things to get better. And if they don't, well, I can rely on you guys. You know, having to basically just deal with the fact... Like, this is a, a gotcha addict and an alcohol fiend. And he's thinking of recovering gifted memberships. Like, bro, you're thinking about the wrong recovery. I guess YouTube isn't going to fix this issue anytime soon. And now I'm just supposed to have less income because of idiots? No. Big ups to uh, Palace Cat's rule for the membership. Absolutely not. I'm putting out the same... Got the pig road sweating. You know what? <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's that. I think it might be that. Because he spent all his money and he was expecting to get some more. Because he's the type of guy to be counting money that he doesn't have yet. But he's counting it in his head. It's like, okay, well, I made like $100 these last two days. So I'm going to make $100 the next two days. So I can spend the $100 that I already have. Sound good to me? Sound good. And big ups uh, Palace Cats Rule for the 10 gifted memberships, dude. I don't know if they're real, you guys, but you, you better take them. I would take them if I was you. You know, just take them. Don't think about it. It might be fake, though. Make sure to check the, the tag. Check the price tag if they're designer memberships or they're fraud content, right? And people are liking the content. In fact, if you take a look at YouTube, this is true. In January, my views were up. My engagement was up. Everything was up. Income way down. Now, normally the income is down in January because of ads. There's like no ads on YouTube in January because all the ads, you know, were for the holiday season and they're dramatically reduced in January. I'm used to that. But why is this a part of the Super Bowl bash segment? Well, I know, but uh, do you guys know? It's a little bit of a subliminal here. He's telling you what you should associate this with. I should associate giving DSP money with the DSP Super Bowl bash. That's what I'm supposed to do. He's playing some 5D chess right here. What I'm not used to is seeing the other thing happen at the same time. That's the problem. It was like the worst timing to have these things happen together. Okay? So, if you could, please support the streams. If you can, please tip. 
And if you would, if you attend this stream on Saturday, that would be a great time to support the streams with a rallying of support with everyone together. That would put me in a much better position for the rest of this month. And I wouldn't have to worry all month about, oh, God, how am I going to pay everything because I got less income because of these idiots. Okay? Thank you. No, I'm not. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone. No, there's no personal responsibility there for anyone to do anything. Well, it sounds like there is. I mean, if you're if you're saying that you're gonna struggle to pay your bills and your family's gonna suffer and you can't even afford a bottle of alcohol for your special event party, that seems like you're you're putting a lot of responsibility on other people and you're giving them the emotional burden of your own bills. And they should, uh, I guess, they should uh, figure out how they're gonna support you, dude. I'm just telling you like it is, and if you can help, thank you in advance. Thank okay? you. You're welcome cool. in advance. Now for the rest. By of the, the way. By the way, now we got a great DSP gimmick where he has decided, like I talked about earlier, he decides on certain things and they can't go otherwise because, you know, it, it's going to go against what he decided. He's decided that he's going to play music for an actual half an hour before he starts the stream. And he's been in his chat for, like, a long time. And he's just been sitting in his chat. Like, he's been ready to go this whole time. This whole time, he's just been ready to start the stream. But he just decided not to do it because 30 minutes of music need to pass first so we can get five more people joining the stream. Well, I guess he can use it right now because he has like 140 people watching, so that's not enough for him. Very nice. <clears throat> oh, was that, was that a nice salute? Anyone to do anything? I'm just telling you like it is, and if you can help, thank you in advance. Okay? Hold on. What cool. was with that salute? Now, for the rest of yeah, look, at, uh, I mean, we straight up got the hand in a, you know, the palm is just stretched out. Salute style. We're saluting people. We're wishing them a very nice day. The in German. The week. <clears throat> We're going to continue on with, you know, full streams. On Sunday, it'll be my React show, and it'll be Like a Dragon Infinite Well. On Monday, it'll be Baldur's Gate 3, and uh, probably, like, Pal World. And then probably Tuesday... And the schedule segment gets skipped. Because of course it is. What do you think? I'm an amateur? Is already kind of muted and destroyed. So I don't even know if we could watch it. We go to watch it and the video is silent. Wait, right? what is destroyed? Hold on. The one that I saw a lot of people suggest is Fallout 3. But honestly, <clears throat> I don't know if that would work. And the reason being, it has all the music in it. And all of that music over the years got muted. Like, a lot of the Fallout 3 playthrough is already kind of muted and destroyed. So I don't even know if we could watch it. We go to watch it, and the video is silent. Right? It's so such you... a stupid gimmick, man. Because he wanted to get a couple of pennies from the video. So he muted all the copywritten music. Like, how much of a meme can you be, man? React to a silent video. Tonight. Go fuck off. Okay. So before we get <clears throat> to shout out. What are we going to do? quick updates. Oh, wow. That was a quick salute. This was for all the people that just tuned in. Just a quick shout out. We're not going to dwell on it. Hold on. <laughs> okay. You can't stop it, Before man. Get... It's Isaac Heimler in the flesh. He's he's returned. <clears throat> to shout out. Two quick. Yep. A, a quick one. Updates. So I guess we should get into <laughs> the segment that I like to call DSP News. No, uh, let's not. number one. Game Pass games for this month. I'd like to give you the lineup, okay? Because it was just announced this morning. <clears throat> nice bold spot flash. We're flashing that spot. For all the dudes that are into that. And all the ladies, of course. Anyway. Um... So, new Game Pass game. Hold on, I want to I wanna get that salute, just because I'm a fan. Two quick updates. Oops. Hold on. We're going to go frame by frame. Okay. So before we get <clears throat> to shout out. Okay, Two almost there. Oh, this was such a quick salute, man. I couldn't even see it. So I guess we should get into the segment that I like. Last time, I promise. Okay. Last time. We need to get so this one. Get <clears throat> to shout out. Two quick. This is it. I guess this is it. The arm isn't exactly stretched out. Oh, yeah. I can use the period in the comma. Thank you very much. I didn't know that was a thing. There we go. Look at this. You can take this one. 
You know, uh, nah, it's not exactly there, but it's gonna be. Updates. We're getting there. So I guess there. we should get into the segment that I like to call DSP News. Uh, update number one. And I guess we're not gonna hear the updates because he's gonna go live. Anyway, um, so new Game Pass games for February, today and Char. Okay, I, I want to have your takes on it. First of all, I'll screenshot this face because this is a this is definitely an uh one of the faces he's ever made. So you want to screenshot this one? But uh, we got I, I got a question to ask you. Do you guys think? When he took that picture, he was under the effects of alcohol. I would say so. I would say so. Because here you got a kind of like a smug face, but the eyes are a little bit like squinty. You know, kind of the way you would do if you're trying to impress a girl at the club, but you're already like 10 shots in and you can you can barely like stand up, but you, you, you want to get laid. So this is the face we make when we do that. And this is the music with, that plays in the club. That's what I'm talking about. Some nice, nice, uh... Good morning, everyone. What? It's my final consecutive streaming day of the week. And today is feedback day. Meaning oh, today no! Discussing no! All the feedback that I received. No! It's feedback day. Why didn't you guys tell me it was feedback day? I wouldn't even been fucking streaming. This shit's gonna suck ass. In the last 24 to 48 hours. Feedback day. What I should do with tech. No! Day, future games for... It's schizophrenia day, man. I would rather have diarrhea day. Retro react over on DSP throwback and more. Plus, we'll talk a little bit... If you know, you know. A bit ...about foam stars and the exciting week ahead. All this and more on today's Level 1 Podcast. Nah, I'm not listening to this shit. Skip the live. ...streams will have a more laid-back vibe. Today is Wednesday, the 7th of February, 2024. And today we're doing a lot of RPG action, which is great. Two different, completely different styles of RPGs, I would say. Uh, two different vibes to the streams. Two vibes. Um, He's been using vibes As a I lot said, on today's podcast recently. A lot of feedback that you guys have given me. Let's actually look at the the graph because I needed it. You know, this channel, and in reality, all the content that I put out on YouTube is very reliant on your constructive. Wow! Criticism. Whoa! Look yeah. at all these vibes. I've taken in some suggestions that I'd like to talk about this morning. July 2023, we got a hundred vibes that I read in. Comments. Then we got so in we'll January, we got um, 83 vibes. That's like the third most. But in that. March, uh, February some, 2020 was peak vibes, not peak, but it was the second most today, with 90 vibes. Today's a unique yeah, so many vibes. It's and uh, this month has only been 13. The sun is out. But there's still time. And the still landscapers time. are out there today. So normally on a normal day when I stream, I would just have the window wide open. I would close the blinds and I would turn the fan up dependent on the temperature outside. If it's cold outside, don't even need the fan. Oh if my God. And we start off day, with, uh, with weatherman the vibes. Like the really out bright as it is today. I'd have the fan on high blast. Um... But the landscapers are out there, and what that means is they're going to be making. Yep, a lot it's of a noise. Wednesday. Right now they're not, so I think I'm. It's, it's weird that I know exactly which more. day his landscapers are there on. Because I have almost closed. There we go. Okay. I'm going to try to get as much cool air in this room as I can before they come by and start making tons of noise, which very well could be during the show. Uh, usually they come by in the mornings. But it was weird. Last week they came by after I ate dinner. It was getting dark and they were out there doing landscaping. And my wife and I were like... You eat dinner at like 5 p.m., dude. Yeah, a little weird. But they're there right now. <laughs> it's not work. exactly that late. Whacking and then they walked away. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay. So if you start to hear noise, let me know. When it becomes intrusive to the show, I'm going to have to close the window. I'm just hoping they get it done quicker because... What happens is, in the afternoon, if it's sunny outside, as it is today, this office heats up when the sun hits it in the afternoon. And if the window's closed, this is going to heat up like an oven. Now, right now, it's nice in here. That's why I have a long sleeve shirt on and everything. But, man, I don't want to be baking in here trying to play Baldur's Gate 3. So Just, like, put on a t-shirt. Like, what's the problem? So it could be an uncomfortable day. Uh, depending on how this goes, uh, obviously we'll, we'll adjust on the fly. Is he trying to uh, convince you that he can't just step away from the stream for 30 seconds and put on a t-shirt? Normally I wouldn't even bring it up, but being that you're going to hear it and everything. And Normally he does bring it up pretty much every Wednesday. I might have to keep jumping. Because they always show. bother him. 
Sometimes he would close the window and then yell at them for making too much noise because he's a, a he's a badass like that. The air circulation situation. I wanted to let you know uh, ahead of time. Shout out to the landscapers. Much love. Of course, shout out to the landscapers. Actual people doing actual jobs and making an actual living. Of course, massive shout out. I respect them big style. Um. <clears throat> so. Great streaming week this week, right? We got a lot done. We made good progress in Baldur's Gate 3, making it back into the main streams uh, after it being away for a week for new releases. Uh, we played the Silent Hill, the short message mini game, uh, and saw what that was all about. Had a, f a couple fun streams of Second 8, where I focused in on the characters I had already been starting to learn and got better at it. And of course, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, we actually made good progress too, and tonight I'm looking infinite for infinite vibes. More. So this week was a good balance for sure. When it came to the stuff that I put out there, keep in mind we still had the regular react show on DSP versus the internet, and we had a retro react stream on DSP throwback of Dark Souls 1, of which the parts are still uploading daily. So really good variety this week, and um, I really enjoyed it. Next week, we're going to have a fun marathon. Now that's going to throw well, a here, wrench into the schedule. Uh, plans, but I think relating to the the contribution I got earlier, this was a snort that wasn't related to any kind of lies, I guess. It was just a snort. It's going to be fine. Um, just kind of a punctuation snort, snort because he uses snorts as punctuation. That normally we would do. Like, for example, I'm probably going to do like... And he uses uh, uh, drinking water as marathon. an end to a rant. To unlock the NFL so he had a heated up rant. During He's drinking water. You know it's probably NFL over. During the Super Bowl marathon event, that'd be pretty neat. We'll see if we can get that uh, to happen. So, really briefly, let's just recap what we did yesterday on streams, but then I want to talk about feedback. Oh, yeah. The this feedback is, loop. I got some really critical feedback regarding, number one, the future of me playing Tekken 8, and number two, the future of Retro Reacts over on the Throwback channel, and I want to discuss both of them openly with you so you guys kind of know what's coming up. I want to openly uh, skip the whole recap segment because why, why the hell is this dude having a daily rap show where he recaps a stream when he does this shit the the day I'm after, anyways. Plain, he genuinely has awful taste, so he yeah, Suicide Squad. Enjoy that god awful dumpster fire. No, I, I don't think he would enjoy it, cause he has no friends to play with. Cause that game is probably pretty entertaining with with friends, or at least most looter shooters are very entertaining with friends. <clears throat> and of course, to get more live feedback, if possible. And he would have to play it with the so, bots. Yes, so no, I I, I think it was going to be miserable, podcast, anyways. Talked a lot about Tekken 8. And essentially that I had come to a crossroads. That with Tekken 8, although I'm pleased with the game, and I really like it and I feel like I'm getting better at it every time I play it, definitely I'm not getting the audience that I had for Street Fighter 6. When I played Street Fighter 6, man, people came out to watch it, especially those first few months, you know, great streams and great engagement and support, and people watched the videos and loved it and wanted more. They were craving more. Um, not so much with Tekken 8. From what I'm seeing... It's a much smaller audience. There we go. Even, I mean, the example I can Another one of those segments. You know, I had played a whole stream with Paul Phoenix on Monday and got progressively better every, you know, video. So and this, according to him, this is not complaining. It's just stating facts. Even though complaining is just dwelling on things that you don't like. After 24 hours, the videos didn't even have 300. Which is this, by the way. That's... That means no one really cares. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> wait, wait. After 24 hours, he couldn't even break 300 views. What? It's one thing if you're playing the a narrative. The room is like an oven. Let that sink in. Oh, so you're you're trying to tell me something? I don't know what what you're trying to tell me. Painting Nazi and saying that because the Jews ran rampant across the universe that they infected the whole universe with a necrovirus, and he wants to turn on the ovens and burn all the. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm struggling to figure out what you mean. narrative based game like an RPG, and you're at part 20 or 30, so most people aren't even up to that part yet, and you're getting less than a few hundred views on a video, there's a reason for it. When you're playing a hot new fighting game, in each video you're progressively getting better, and each match is, is competitive and interesting, and people aren't watching, you're like, what gives? And we talked about this yesterday. So, basically after yesterday, I asked for feedback on Tekken 8. Okay. And what happened? What do you guys think is going on with this game? I want feedback on how to continue to play it. Because I'm really curious. I'm actually for once really curious about what kind of feedback he got. So let's find out. Because or, or 
we're not going to find out now. We're going to find out after the schedule segment. I think that's what he's going to do because he wants to waste as much time as humanly possible, and that's how you do that. There's going to be two schools of thought here, and there's not that much I can do in regards to choosing one because I have to. There's two different ways to approach Tekken 8 moving forward. Approach number one. <laughs> Did you see this snort plus emote? He emoted in real life as he was snorting. Not that much that's, I can that's do. That's one of the funnest snorts that I've seen in a long time. Look at this. Try and pay attention. In regards to choosing one, because I have to. There's two different ways to approach Tekken 8 moving forward. Look at this. <laughs> It was like a sound effect to the emote. Approach number one. That, that's how he would be if you put him in Fortnite. He would have this emote and then the sway emote. Is to get better <laughs> at the game and play as hard as I can and watch matchup videos and try to study knowledge of the meta of the game, meaning character knowledge that I don't have right now. Try to learn how to block high-low mix-ups. Try to get to, to improve, but focusing only on a core series of characters. Because in a fighting game, and somebody getting get banned, it, you need to focus on a core group of characters so that you can actually, you know, learn their ins and outs of how they play. And this takes a lot of time and dedication. This is not, oh, I played with the character twice, I've mastered them. That No. You have to be focused on said character. Take a look at Street Fighter VI and how long it took me to finally have it click. It took about two to three months for the game to click. So I learned all of the different various... Uh, game mechanics and once I learned the basic game mechanics then applying those to each character like Blanca, Honda you know, Lily, Dalsim etc. and eventually then grinding with those characters to take them to master level. It took an incredible amount of time and effort, you know, thousands of matches in some cases so with that being said um, with Tekken it would be the same taking like three or four characters saying this is who I want to play as focusing on them, learning their stuff, playing with them constantly and kind of rotating between them until I can get them to a high level and playing in the meta of the game so that's one situation if I do that the gameplay level will continuously improve. You'll see higher level gameplay, tougher matches, me fighting better players and climbing the ranks. It'll be slow climbing, but it'll definitely be interesting. Will you play the Pyro game on stream whenever it releases? Oh, it sure. It looks hilarious. Yeah, yeah, totally, of course. Okay, now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy that shit, even though I, I know it was, uh, it's gonna be free, but I would be willing to buy that. If it was on, on, like, Steam Early Access, I would buy that. The other side, or the other possibility, the other way to tackle the game, is to play it far more casually. What I mean by that is, instead of only focusing on, say, three characters, four characters, and getting better and learning the meta, instead, saying, it's not that big of a deal. I don't need to get good at this game. I just want to play it casually and enjoy this it. This is what he's going to do. So what that would mean is, basically... as If you already don't know, if you can't tell, this is what he's going to do. You know, maybe every week, t picking a different character. Because the first option featured a bunch of reasons why he doesn't want to do it and why it doesn't work. And the second option seems very quick and easy and convenient. Hmm, very interesting. I wonder which one he's gonna pick. I don't appreciate him playing Tekken 8 and him copying my flow by saying vibes. Nothing he <laughs> does is a vibe. Imagine him vaping on stream, vibing with the stream if he actually knew how to communicate like myself. I I can't imagine him Wilson smoking anything. He's gonna die. Wrong, it's a fighting game, dude. Where's my money, Jacks? Asterisk, amort, snort. Yeah, that's that, that's it. Watching some basic tutorial videos. It's a different series. Phil, you're not as interesting. Well, what about when I played fucking Street Fighter and then I got a lot of support? What about that? That's also a fighting game, you fucking dunce. Trying to apply those basics to that character right away, jumping online and trying to do a couple sets. Yep, yep, yep. I would use Kuma ways. If you truly want to make. Quality gameplay, you have to get good at the game, all right? Having a casual level understanding of, of fighting game is not good enough to make quality gameplay, right? The thing is, and I know this from experience, that not everyone out there cares about quality gameplay. Well, Phil is not exactly known for quality gameplay. You, you can, I mean, you can have the shittiest gameplay known to mankind and make it entertaining. Uh, well, well, not not DSP. Most technically you should 
for high level tech and gameplay are not coming to DSP gaming. They're not going to there be we go. here. I'm They're not, not coming for tech. any kind of high level anything. Um, That's why we're on level one, of remember? Out there to go and see people do that kind of stuff, right? And therefore, I feel like if I go for the higher level gameplay, I'm already kind of isolating my audience because how many people realistically want to see DSP get good with Paul or King or June or whomever and keep coming back to see my journey to... It's not that it's not Master in this game, whatever it's called, the higher ranks or whatever. Um, wow. So there's the truth of the matter is... Punctuation really snort. Care? That was and a full sad, stop. I do think like years and years ago, back in the day, I was well more well-known for fighting games, correct? I kind of gave that up. Around the era when Street Fighter V came out, I gave it up. I said... Street Fighter V sucks so bad. I didn't want to keep playing it. And without Street Fighter V being in the mix as the major fighting game that I was playing, instead, I was going to do more variety of other games, which I did. If you take a look at the last, you know, 10 years or so, I adopted a ton more style of games that normally I wasn't even playing. I mean, games like the Persona series, the Yakuza series, and things that became staples of my content that I hadn't been previously. They kind of moved in and took over for my fighting game coverage. Now, I'm not to say that... I didn't cover fighting games. I did. When a new fighting game came out, I would play it. If it had a story mode, I would play it. Any offline modes, I would play them. I would learn a few characters, go online. And then essentially, I would drop the game within a couple of weeks of it releasing. And this pretty much went for every fighting game, whether it was a Mortal Kombat or an Injustice or a Tekken or another kind of a spin-off fighter. Whatever fighters I played, that was, that was it for me, right? Like, I didn't really care as much about them. Now, when Street Fighter Six came oh, out... This Hawaiian money LMFAO is it AXA PTED. Hawaiian money? I prefer Hawaiian barbecue, but Hawaiian money still works. Because I, I think Hawaii is a part of the US, so that makes you American, so that, that makes it work. If you were from a Spanish-speaking country, you can you can get out. You can get out immediately before the, the ICE officers catch you. Because you're getting deported, man. That's when things change. That's some trouble. Because Street Fighter Six. You don't want that. so good. And I was like... Man, they really I really feels like this is an invigoration. Big ups Dunce 808 of <laughs> community for me because they put so much effort into the game. It plays how you would want a competitive fighter to play. It has the best online netcode of any fighter I've ever seen. It has a ton of features both online and offline which is great. So all this stuff to me is saying this is the time to get back in the fighting game. So I did. Last year I committed myself to Street Fighter 6 the entire summer and early into the fall. It actually wasn't even until like, what, October when I laid up and stopped playing it regularly because there were so many other releases out. And I did well, you know? You know, as much as morons on the internet would like to pretend because they always pretend and try to say anything that I do of any kind of achievement doesn't exist, I got good at Street Fighter 6. I took multiple characters to the master level with winning records. Unlike other people who were picking Ken and grinding it out and, and only winning a third or a fourth of the time but still got to master, every character I played with in Street Fighter Six had Dude. a big winning record. Oh my god, we're still on this. Lost, and I got them to master sure. relatively quickly. So, but it's, it's, just like, it's just like grasping at straws to make yourself seem better than what you actually are, man. Because whenever a pro player matched with him, he got fucking bodied. He got destroyed. He also got bodied by Peace of Peace, who'd been playing the game for a couple of months and never played like a Street Fighter game before. Or at least not actually, like trying to, to learn it and get better. That was a big accomplishment for, for me. A big accomp- Dude, you're 40 years old. A big accomplishment is getting mastered to fucking in Street Fighter? Are we serious? to get back into a competitive level. I would like to think that if I took those- He's also not on a competitive level. He just played competitive, the competitive mode in a video game. And he got to an arbitrary achievement that people with like 40% win loss records get to. Those characters to a tournament, I would at least do decent. I certainly wouldn't win any tournaments. But I think that I probably would have beaten a few opponents. Oh, before. man. And that's way better than I would say I ever would have done. Like, this is... Oh, this time. is so wild. He's doing such incredible mental gymnastics for, like, something so... So worthless as being a master in Street Fighter. And he's acting like his whole life has been building up to that point. God damn, man. This is so fucking pathetic. ...to 15 years because I just didn't give a crap. You know, I really felt like I had fallen out of love 
with fighting games because Street Fighter V was so shitty. Now, in regards to Tekken 8, the other way I can approach it outside of getting good like I did in Street Fighter 6 is to just casually play it. And the truth be told, if you go back in time and you look at my original fighting game coverage that I did on my original Dark Side Phil channel, and even the coverage that I did on the DSP Street Fighter channel for about a year, it was more casualized coverage. And what We're calling it covered, is, by the way. If you haven't noticed, the whole time he has made his mind up to not try and get good at Tekken. I don't care about this. I don't care. But he seems like he wants to care way too much and he's explaining himself in excruciating detail when it's clear that he just made up his mind already. I absolutely did not focus in on only a couple characters and get good and try to play at a high level. I, that never happened. I was known as the casual guy who got popular on YouTube for fighting games and the FGC resented me for that. Huge. That's why when back in the day, if you look at interview, he didn't get what? What? Yo, yo, we, no, oh my God. Now we're transitioning into a random rant about fight FGC hating on him. But he didn't get popular on YouTube for fighting games. He got popular on YouTube because he was playing every single game because he literally had no job. He can afford to sit at home and play like 12 hours of games daily. But anyways, the FGC, as we all know, hated him because he was a piece of shit asshole. And he had incredible amounts of arrogance and smugness. And he couldn't back it up with actual skill. Because if you can back that up, I'm fine with it. You can be as smug as you want. You can think you're the best ever if you can back that shit up. I feel up. sad for him. It's one of those times where he has no family and friends to appreciate. Be proud of him for what he feels are accomplishments so he has to pump himself up. That is absolutely true. Except I don't feel sad for him. I don't feel anything for him. I'm Matter of fact, I'm very satisfied that he's in this mindset. He was from like 2009, 2010. And they'll ask guys like, you know, Mike Ross or something at a tournament. <clears throat> so what do you think of DSP? And he'd be like... DSP, I don't know who the fuck that is, and blah, blah, blah. Of course they all knew who I was. They constantly talked about me on their commentary at tournaments. They dropped my name everywhere, always in a negative light. Why? Yes. Because I didn't want to be part of their community. What? Dude, I, I, I've I, never heard of somebody wanting to be accepted in a community more than Dark Side fucking Phil. And the community almost unanimously rejected him or just felt pity for them. Because they saw how much he was trying to be a part of that community. How hard he wanted to be accepted. And then he wasn't because he was just a piece of shit. It's as simple as that. I'd been there, done that. I had no desire to be a competitive fighting game player. But I was very prominent on the internet for making fighting game content. Despite the fact I wasn't good. They hated that shit. Here they were grinding away. Trying to get popular on the internet for high level gameplay. But I was way more prominent than they were and uh, and you know at that point so they were jealous on YouTube, that's it they really resented it <clears throat> but again that was because i was a casual guy i was more imp uh i was more focused on let's do over the top commentary on silly gameplay and have a good time with it rather than oh let's play high level and teach people how to play the game that was never my intention you know i was doing entire sets of Deon madness the worst character or one of the worst characters in Street Fighter 4 and I was beating people with Dan and laughing at them and how bad they sucked because they lost to Dan online. That's the kind of content I used to put out and that was what was prominent. All right. But that was like 13, 14 years ago. Man, right. give me a fucking break with this revisionist history. And you guys know I can give him credit where it's due and I say he's right when whenever he's right because as you know the broken clock is right twice a day but in this case he's just making up a new reality just so he can feel comfortable in it and this is a 40 year old dude it's not a teenager that is just growing up and you got all the hormones in his brains and all the shit is fucked up you don't know what the fuck you're doing this is a grown-ass man and he likes to tell you every day how much of a grown-ass man he is like that was a long time ago and that kind of content today is actually looked down upon by anyone into fighting games meaning if you make content in a fighting game and you have commentary where you're like berating the other person or insulting the other person or saying ridiculous things 
Oh, that's not allowed anymore. If you can back it up, it's fine. Trash talk is always fine. The thing is, he never actually understood what trash talk is. If you guys have seen that scene from The Office... I'm so casual in the FGC, I'm taking out loans, big face. Yeah, that's how casual he was. He was taking out loans. They called him the walking ATM, by the way. We've talked to, to Jaha uh, and uh, Bunke. They, they both were on that being said. And they both confirmed he was just a loser that people reached out to when they needed some quick cash. Right? That's too taboo, too harsh. Yeah, if you've seen that, um, that scene from The Office where they play table tennis... And, uh, what was her name? Oh, the, the Mindy Kaling character. I fucking forgot. Well, she was playing against... And I'm, I'm spacing out the name of the other character, too. Wow, that's a great knowledge. But she does... Uh, yeah, Kelly. Uh, Kelly was playing against the... Fuck, with Pam. God damn it, how did I even forget? I watched that show, like, five times. Kelly was playing Pam. She didn't know what trash talk means. about sex. What an unhealthy sex life this is. The Q&A was also evidence that they only know about food and games. Yep. What the hell? Straight up man-child vibes. See what I did there? Oh, I see. Man-child vibes. That was pretty good. My cross is on a channel called Versus Vortex, a channel with 28k subs that gets over 10 times the views of Phil on almost every video. Oh wow, I wonder why. I really wonder why. You're supposed hmm. to be ultra respectful now in the FGC. Really? You're supposed to praise your opponents constantly, never say a negative thing about the game, only be positive, and it's like, wait, what? Like, when I grew up in arcades, no lie, it was this actual, like, hazing atmosphere. You can and still you do that. And people were hazing you, or like in a locker room at a high school. That's really what it was like in the fighting game community in its early inceptive days, before the days of Street Fighter IV, esports sponsorships and everyone making bank playing fighting game and it's about money again there we go we went full circle it's about people hating them transition into they make money so they're bad so i grew up in a whole different generation that's a very good question why is this being talked about it's just out of nowhere is just actually out of nowhere is it in uh, I know why he, it's being talked about. It's because it bothers him. It's because it hurts him deep inside that this happened. Or at least he thinks this happened. And that's why it's happening. Because this is the daily therapy session. Because this guy can't actually go to real therapy. He needs to have therapy with people that sit on his chat and wait for him to stop talking about this stuff so he can start playing video games. That shit talk was common. No one would watch someone play a game and shit talk each other in a fighting game and then be offended at all. It never happened. Everyone was used to the shit talk. You had to be in line with it. You know what I'm saying? Now, I go ahead and I play a fighting game and God forbid that I make a joke or I say that someone sucks and is a button masher. It's like, oh, that was so insanely dis- Really? What the fuck are you talking what, about? What kind of a joke? Calling them mouth droolers and uh, human pieces of shit and that they shouldn't exist? Because that's what he was doing playing Street Fighter. when Whenever somebody beat him uh, through quote-unquote lag, that's what happened. How is that a joke? Wow. Like, I didn't... I don't. At least if you're going to talk all that shit, just own up to it. Don't pass it off as some kind of a joke. I mean, it is funny to me, but I'm not exactly receiving that the way it's intended. I'm, I'm looking at it as he is the joke. And he said something that is really stupid and it's really funny, so I laugh. But it was never intended as a joke. Know who the person is who I'm playing, right? I have no knowledge of who the people are on the other side of the internet playing these games. I'm not making insanely hurtful personal insults about them and their character and their real life shit. And this is in uh, response to whenever he called somebody a mouth drooler and that they should go and play something else. And it turned out that guy is actually like paralyzed and uh, an actual disabled person. I'm just saying their gameplay sucks. Because if you take enough shots, eventually you're going to hit somebody and it might be the wrong guy and he hit the wrong guy and it came back to bite him in the ass and now we're talking about this. Right? That's... There's nothing wrong with that. Because he knows exactly what we're talking say, about. If you lose to someone and you got sour grapes about it, you're going to say they're a scrub. Right? That's It's just a common thing. And the fact that... And he doesn't understand what sour grapes means. Because sour grapes is if you don't get something that you actually wanted to get, 
and then pretend you never wanted to get it in the first place. FGC, this has become such a prominent thing now. Oh God, you can't fucking make- Like, a good example would be him being a part of the FGC. Hey Phil, we don't want you in this community, you're too toxic. Well, I never wanted to be in this community in the first place. That's sour grapes. One of others and stuff, it's like, what are you talking about, right? And of course for me, I'm always under the microscope. God forbid that, that anyone else does it, it's fine. But if Dark Side Phil does it, he shows up on the Scrub Quotes Twitter account and all my detractors. Oh, there we go again. Redo it and get content out of it and stuff. Oh, just, there we go. So this is direct response to ALT. Uh, Twitter.com. Direct response, because you can see it bothered him. So let's go. Um, uh, is it going to come up? Of course it's going to come up. It's the goat. How is he not going to come up? Here it is. Here it is. Because this tweet of him calling Justin Wong the the Donald Trump of, uh, of fighting games, it got retweeted. It got quote tweeted by Scrub Quotes and got 1.3 thousand likes and 135 views, 135 thousand views. And Justin Wong retweeted it with this gif of Donald Trump. So now we're just responding to ALT. That's very nice. So stupid. Shout out to him. Dumb. That's not the nature of how it used to be in that community. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so, the thing that is about this, if I continue to play Tekken 8 casually, instead of I don't care about getting good at the game. Only call the people who beat them scrubs. Pretty much, yeah. Because if you're not a scrub, you would uh, acknowledge that your opponent at least tried. Even if, if they're good, if they're bad, whatever. If they beat you, you, you just recognize it. You just take it, man. You just take it. Even if you're a sore loser, you're going to get mad about it, but you're just going to take it. Whatever. And I play a new character every week. That's all well and good. But is that really enough? Is that enough to keep me interested? Is that enough to keep you guys interested? Because if This, by the way, because now we're going actually full circle back to the beginning of the topic. This all stemmed from him talking about how he's going to play Tekken, if he's going to be a tryhard or he's going to play it quote-unquote casually. Eventually, we're going to get bored of just playing it at a casual level and just messing around with new characters. And essentially, that's exactly what happens every time that I play a fighting game. I'll play it for like a month or two, and then I get bored and I just don't play it anymore, right? Like, for example, with Tekken 7, I think I played four or five characters and Lily was my best character. And I got to a point where I was like, okay, I'm now at the point. The only way I'm going to improve is to study this game, to actually put time and effort into learning the meta. How do I parry? How do I learn the absolute perfect timing to keep hitting people to do giant combos and the like to mix them up? How do I get around? I need to know all the matchup knowledge for all these characters. And I even said it to the audience. I said, I feel like I've now hit the wall where I need to now treat this more seriously to get better. But at that point, and you know, this was many years ago when Tekken 7 had just come out, people were like, nah, that's enough. I was like, okay. And that's when we moved on. And I, I literally never played Tekken 7 again because uh, people said that they wanted other stuff. Now, we're a different point now. You know, we're years, years later, and I actually got really good at Street Fighter 6. And for an extended period of seven plus months, I feel like the content got better and better. My gameplay got better and better. Of course right? you do. Because you have a completely unrealistic vision of yourself, so you always tend to think the best about yourself, which is very harmful for a person, especially a person who doesn't have anybody to call him out or at least check him on how they're doing and tell him how things are through a, a neutral perspective. And definitely Catherine is not, is not the person to do that. And the only reason really that I dropped Street Fighter 6 is because the game's stagnant now. But I don't mind that. That's that's great for me. I get a lot to laugh at. Like, really, the, it, it's hit a level where there's nothing changing in it. It plays the same. Everyone's playing the same online. It's just an endless grind. The only way I would get better at the game is to play it five, six hours a day like the pros do, and I'm not going to do that. So it makes sense to move on to another game, which is what we're doing with Tekken. But the way I see it is, like, I'm kind of damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. If I drop the game entirely, people will be upset. Like, you just played it for two weeks. Why so wait, this whole segment was just a therapy segment in addressing certain things that have happened that only the true and honest detractors would know happened. But now we're back at, at square one, which is you can't satisfy everybody. Well, thanks then. So this whole segment beforehand was just for him, was just for his own feelings that are obviously very hurt.
dropping it so early. If I play it and try to get better at it and try to reach a higher level of gameplay in it, which I very well could do, then I have to focus on three or four characters and people are undoubtedly going to say, well, you always use the same characters, this is boring. If I try to learn every character on a casual level, I'm never going to get good at the game and undoubtedly people are going to say, man, every time you play you're only fighting scrubs and you're not really getting any better and this is boring, right? The way that I can make it spicy is to have the kind of commentary that I, I'm known for, but people find it inflammatory. People find it insulting. People find it unbecouth of someone trying to make content on the internet to talk shit now. Wow, so, we do we have a new word unlocked? Unbecouth? I'm going to learn a new word today. Unbecouth. Uh, I assume it's spelled like this. Uncouth. So it says, lacking good manners, refinement, or grace. But unbecouth doesn't seem like it's a word. What if I look that up? Oh, what does Google say? It looks like there aren't many great matches for your search. Try using words that might appear on the page you're looking for. For example, cake recipes instead of how to make a cake. Well, okay. Well, I, I learned a new word today, uncouth. It's kind of like, so what do you do? Right? It's like, no matter what content I do, everyone has an excuse for why it's no good. The high-level stuff is too boring and samey and grindy. The casual play, you never get good, and it gets repetitive and boring because you're only playing scrubs. Oh, well, if you talk shit during your commentary, that's entertaining, but also insulting and you're a horrible human. So it's like, all right, so so what am I supposed to make then? You know what I mean? Like, It's funny because I've read the feedback. In the last 24 hours, a bunch of people left comments about this on my videos or reached out to me otherwise. And everyone's feedback is different. One person outright said the following. I'm not kidding. I'm paraphrasing, but this is outright what they said. The reason that people come and watch you play fighting games is because they want to see you get angry and toxic. They find it entertaining. That's what got you noticed for Street Fighter 4 a million years ago. That's why the FGC resented you so badly because they couldn't get the views you were getting uh -huh. on the gameplay that they were putting yes. out. They thought, oh, yes, yes, Phil, you better. were you were so great that people hated you because of your greatness. They were so jealous of your greatness. It's like LeBron. People hate him because nobody can be like LeBron. They're just jobbers than his so why is he popular right people didn't understand that you were funny <laughs> you're still funny phil just not in the way you mean they didn't like that right <laughs> people like you when you're at your worst because it's funny to see you flip out with rage and this is this is the thing that gets people watching dsp uh the trolls i mean not the real fans the real fans watching for uh, everything else but this is that on any given day you might tune in a podcast that you think is going to be just a bunch of fucking schedule segments and then Q&A about food. And then we get this. So if you do that kind of stuff all the time, more people will show up and watch it. Like, yeah, but every time I do it, people complain that I'm toxic and I'm a jerk. And, you know, it's like, I don't, here's the thing <clears throat> for me, there's got to be a balance. When I make content, there has to be a balance. And the balance has to be the following. Uh, Is he swaying so much left and right just to keep a balance? That makes you think. Maybe balance is uh, at the core of DSP gaming. I am Without any balance, he would just fall off. But uh, what is he? Let's hear this one. This one is going to be good. Enjoying what I'm doing and want to keep doing it. Okay? You enjoy what I'm doing and want me to keep doing it. And of course... The other uh, thing is... Dear Lord, astounding levels of copium. The copium is flowing like rivers today. People actually show up to watch... Rivers of copium. ...engage with it and support it. Those are the three factors. I like what I'm doing, you like what I'm doing, and it can be supported so I can make money and have a business out of it. Okay? Those are the three key factors to success here with my gameplay and business. Other people may be different, but that's the keys to success for me. All right? Now... Well, that's why you're not successful. Now, very much, there is some of the, the time when that's not always true. Sometimes I'll be playing a game I hate, but you guys outright love watching me play it, and I will tough my way through it regardless, even if I don't like it. I mean, perfect example of that, Wolong Fallen Bullshit last year, whatever it was called. I did not like that game. I felt that game was a bad knockoff of a bunch of others, bad execution, bad controls, bad graphics. Everything was fucked up about it. I didn't enjoy it. But I toughed through it because you guys wanted to see it. So there you go. Now, there's other cases where I like a game.
but you guys don't like it that much, but because I'm enjoying it so much, I'll still go through with it. I call these kind of like pet projects or kind of the love letter the, games. The like love letter games? Trigger, I realize that my mainstream audience doesn't love that. But I want to play it because it's a game that's near and dear to my heart from my childhood. I want to make that playthrough so those who do care about me as a person can eventually watch it and see how much it meant to me and why, right? It'll never go popular. It'll never get giant views, but at least it's cool that I got a playthrough out of that last year. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you can make those exceptions. Sometimes you have to make that exception to put out content that's either meaningful to you or your audience or both, and it goes hand in hand that... You know, if you make that kind of content that's not always agreed upon on both sides, you got to balance it with stuff that people agree upon. So that way I can keep operating a successful business, right? You're not op operating a successful business, bro. Like 20 minutes ago, you admitted to not even being able to buy alcohol for your special event. How is this a successful business? A successful business mean you make a profit to the point where you're comfortable. What so, are we talking about? This dude, every stream he does, he's talking about how he's not comfortable with the revenue that his business brings him. How is it a successful business then? And I know, I know, it's just a cope. It's just a cope. It's just a guy bashing his head into a wall because if he stopped, he would realize how much of a failure he is. So he needs to get as, as concussed as possible so as his brain doesn't think about it. My question is, again, what to do with Tekken? Because people seem to be all over the place with this. Some people want to see me get better at the game. They say, all right, you know what? Pick three, four characters. Focus on them. Rotate between. Get better. Learn balance changes to the game. They, there was just a balance patch last night. They rebalanced Tekken, uh, uh, Tekken 8. They made it so that June... This is getting skip, skip, skipped. So, I got to learn these changes. Right? I do. I, this patch came out. I have to learn these changes if I want to get better at the game. I have to know now what's happened to these characters so I can take advantage of that knowledge, right? Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I'm having a good time with the game. I'm liking getting better. I had a real a good amount of fun yesterday or two days ago playing with Paul. That was fun because I was like, wow, I didn't use him since launch. A week and a half later, I jump in and I'm actually doing really good. I got combos. I'm learning strategies. I'm dominating in a lot of these matches, you know. And the way I see it, if I keep playing at a higher level, I will enjoy it to some extent. Now, will I hit the wall like I did with Street Fighter Six? I might. I might get to a point where this is the meta, and in order to get better, the only way I'm going to get better is to easily either, either find the optimal way to play the game online, which I don't think anyone even knows in Tekken right now. Like, a lot of people bought the game on PC and immediately found out the PC version isn't better. Like, with Street Fighter Six, the PC version is better. Everyone found ways to tweak it. So they have better input lag and shit. People who bought Tekken on PC are like, oh, so really it wasn't better. It's not. It's supposedly like an equal playing field right now, which is actually a good thing for the launch of a game like this. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, like right now, it's a great time to play the game hardcore and get better at it. But I very well could hit the wall like I did a Street Fighter 6 and be like, well, oh, you've been hitting the wall now. for a while Five now. Hours a day. You don't even notice the wall is there, but you keep hitting it. I'm not playing Tekken 8 five hours a day. That's never going to happen, you know? At most, I'm playing it, what, twice a week? So, you, you get to that point. Now, if I play it casually, that's cool, but understand, I'm just not going to get better at it. I'll, I'll mess around and learn basic strategies with a few characters, but I'm probably never going to get to the point where I'm actually playing the game at any kind of a high level. It's just me messing around and always playing low-level people. You know, which I'm okay with, but probably it'll get boring within a few weeks and I'll drop it in a month or so, right? Like, that's how, that's what's destined to happen if you play a game like that. <clears throat> so still, so, no outcome of the whole discussion. And right now, I'm kind of like on the fence about it. I really don't know what to do. So what I think I'm going to do for Friday Night Fights this week, I want to go back to King. I haven't used him now in a bit. And I'm going to study. I'm going to look at some matchup knowledge. I'm going to look at people doing videos about like, what I need to know what to do to punish with King. When someone does an unsafe move, how do I punish it after the fact? And does he have any good high-low mix-ups? I think he does, but I'm not aware of it. Like, I need to figure this stuff out. Once I figure that stuff out, because I know basic juggles, I know his command, some of his good command throws, but I need to implement better strategy with King. Okay? So I think I want to focus on that for at least Friday. For Friday Night Fights, it'll be like King on Friday Night Fights and see how it goes. But outside of oh, that... Oh, and a nice nose pick. I'm not used to seeing those, the nose pick. <clears throat> And then we wipe it on the 
on the arm of the chair. Very nice. I'm actually not sure what I want to do next in the game. Do I want to stick with Paul, King, June? Do I want to take on a new character? I have to think about it. And again, I want your feedback on this. Um, Man, the chair probably has layers of shit on it. it, it the, those, the, the arms of the chair are probably a completely different color than what it's supposed to be. <clears throat> so we'll see. All right, we'll see. And please continue to give me feedback because I need it. But yeah, I am kind of at a part where I need to make a, a, an important decision. And I'm not sure what the right choice is. I feel like no matter what choice I make, some people won't be happy. But right? <laughs> Dude, wait, wait. This whole segment was about him getting so much good criticism uh, that he realized what he's going to do from now on. But the bottom line is that he doesn't even know. Okay, so that's what happened yesterday, anyway, on the podcast. Then we did Baldur's Gate 3, and Baldur's Gate 3 did really well. Uh, we're in Act 2. If we just casually move along. Oh, this is the best. And we did a full ex- We're going to- Excuse me. We took- I went in there ready. I had a bad time again. And we're going to just basically go through all of that tonight. For what I'm sure, man. I'm sure. The entire part of Chapter 4 and finish it. Whatever you know, makes you feel good. Just say stuff. Just say words that make you feel good. So, tonight- Really awesome night in Like a Dragon. I'm really awesome. 45 p.m. Pacific time and enjoy the story with me. Great podcast. I'm streaming tomorrow. I won't be around. Uh, <laughs> likely. I know I have to run a lot more errands tomorrow than I did last week. Last week was like a super short week where I was I ran off for like an hour, came home, and had a lot of time with my wife. Sadly, this week, I got a lot of stuff I got to do. I got to go to the pet store. I got to go to the liquor store to see what liquor I can get for the marathon on Saturday. As if. Wait, do supermarkets in the U.S. not have liquor? Because in Europe, every supermarket basically has liquor or at least a, a section, like a separate store where you can get liquor. This chair would be able to be aged like a tree if you cut the seat. And, uh, and it should be a good day. Okay, so chat says it depends. Wait, did we got an F again? No, we're back. We're back. Come on. Don't make me panic like this. Because this is not happening again. If it happens again, I'm going full-on DSP on the ISP. Then, I'm calling him right now. Friday, more Baldur's Gate 3. I'm on the phone I'm right curious, now. For those who've played this game, do you know how close I am to the end of Act 2? Because we got Last Light today. No, I don't give a fuck. For this game. Okay? So, <clears throat> what I'm wondering is if we can get into Act 3 of Baldur's Gate by the time Final Fantasy comes out, at least then it'll feel like we got really far and we can more casually play the game, all right? Because I would say when we beat all of Act 1, the momentum was there to go into Act 2, and then I didn't play it for the week and people were upset. Now I played it again and we're getting good beat the two weeks, so that way we can feel like we're in the home stretch of the game once we hit Act 3, okay? Um, but anyway, yeah, so more Baldur's Gate 3 on Friday. Friday night... Will be Friday Night Fights, Tekken 8, probably with King, to get better with what? King. Wait, wait, no, there's no Fs. There's no Fs. Everything looks good. Saturday Everything looks good. Don't troll. Zero oh. trolling. I'm putting my foot down. I'm not going to do anything, but I'm just, I'm just talking a bunch of stuff so you guys get scared. You should get terrified now that you're going to get banned from my chat. On event, which I'm calling my the... Super Bowl bash. Where we're doing this again? You already did this, bro. You did this. Didn't he do this? Maybe that was from yesterday's stream. I'm getting shit mixed up. And now we're starting to formulate <laughs> a lot more what we'll be doing during this event. Number one, I'll be dressed up in NFL attire all day long. I have three jerseys to swap between. I have a helmet to wear. I have other things. Yeah, to hopefully the only guy who gets banned today is that guy who was constantly imagining me in gay scenarios having sex with men. To take out like little props and things. Maybe I should have left him in. Maybe because I'm, I'm kind of curious to what scenarios he's imagining me in. Because that seems to be his uh, consistent fantasy. Thanks. Uh, with men booze, having sex with what me. What kind of booze, I don't know. Maybe I'll have some hard liquor. Maybe I'll have some beer. We'll see. I'll try to figure out what I want to get um, to drink during the show. Uh, there will be food. My wife has already found an awesome recipe for a dip that she's going to make. But outside of that, we're not sure what else. She's going to make at least one, if not two more dishes that we'll be eating over the course of the day. That'll be awesome. Oh, yeah. That was definitely yeah. from yesterday. You if you want gameplay, you're going to get gameplay. The first piece of gameplay you're going to get, Madden 24, simulated match of the Super Madman 24, that's what I want to get. And I'm getting it every time I tune into the Level 1 podcast, I know I'm getting Madman 24. Super Bowl, Kansas City Chiefs versus San Francisco 49ers, and I'll commentate on it. That'll be pretty neat, commentating on this 
AI match and see what, what Madden thinks who will win the Super Bowl. Right? Yeah, but now. do you know the rules? Number two, we're going to do a couple of hours of Like a Dragon Infinite Well. Why? Because number one, I need to make maximum progress in the game this week to try to unlock Dondoko Island. And number two, because I should unlock the NFL player on Saturday. So I can play as an NFL player in the game during the NFL Super Bowl Marathon. Kind of makes sense. Kind of a timely thing, right? Um, that's cool. But also, you guys have had other ideas. What, Call of Duty? One of the ideas that came up. Yeah, it's Call of Duty. I try this new Foam Stars game. What Foam Stars? That just came out on PlayStation Plus. Now, <laughs> now for those who aren't aware, Foam Stars is a game that basically looks like a knockoff of Splatoon. Apparently, people who were playing it are like... I thought it was a knockoff Splatoon of Fortnite. Tweaks. It's not exactly like Splatoon, but absolutely, it's it's Splatoon. And again? Okay, we're back. We're back for now. There's no way this shit's gonna he keep happening. They told me they're gonna fix it, and they fixed it. It's been fixed all day. These assholes, man. I'm so pissed. Here's something that was kind of interesting. Foam Stars released yesterday, but they did a like a launch event for it. Okay. Um, I'm about to do a launch they, event for my slander campaign about my ISP. Did this launch event? They did something completely different than what I'm gonna did. shit up their whole Facebook with slander posts. Bet. They actually hired small-time content creators to go to the launch event of Foam Stars. They didn't hire big-time people and pay them insane amounts of money. Like they didn't hire fucking giant streamers to go there. They just hired like like normal level people, and. Although I appreciate that, because I think that that's a cool way to approach it, getting normal people like you and me to play the game and tell their real opinions. Phil, you're anything but a normal person like you and me. I'm also less normal because I find enjoyment in this, whatever the fuck this is. But still, normal people, you're not that. Right? It didn't really get much traction. Like, if you look at the full... Because he, like, he really has convinced them. He's that deluded. That his lifestyle is equivalent to somebody that actually gets up in the morning early, gets dressed for work, goes in there, puts in an eight-hour shift, and then comes back home. He really, really, really believes he is like that. And it's astounding. Star's launch party that they did, the people who tweeted about it, who got paid to be there, they get like 50 likes on their post. They got like, you know, 100 retweets. DSP. You actually get a lot less, Phil. You actually get a lot less than 50 likes. If it was 50 likes, it would be like a drama tweet. It's like, wow, that's like almost no reach on Twitter. You know, like that's not social media like they were hoping. But also Phil thinks that people are afraid of liking his posts because if they do, they're going to get bullied. Or I'm sure. I'm sure when they did this event, they didn't do it so that 100 people would know about Foam Stars. So... It didn't really do much, and that's why I was saying yesterday, <clears throat> it was weird that Foam Stars had come out, but I hadn't heard anything about it. Like, there was no buzz on social media about it yesterday at all. It wasn't until people actually got their hands on it yesterday that started talking about it. So I've seen some footage of it, and it's not very impressive, just to be honest. And people were talking about it. I mean, the overall opinion on it is basically this. Meh. It's not terrible. But it's not good. The major problem people are having is finding enough people to play a solid game. Like, people keep matching up and either can't find a full team or they find it and it's laggy as shit because no one's playing it. Like, it's basically kind of dead on arrival. So, those who are playing it are saying it's not that bad. You know, the graphics are decent on PS5. And it's fun, but again, I mean, think it's variations on Splatoon. And it's funny because you would think that if it's a free for PS Plus game, and so many people have PS Plus to, to have online play for their games, that it would be a no-brainer people would be playing it. But what's actually happened, I feel, at least from what I'm seeing on social media, is that something's been exposed that a lot of people have been saying for years, but a lot of people don't want to listen to, and they always say, oh, no, that's not true. And what's happened is this game's formula has been exposed. What do, what do I mean by that? Here's what I mean. Splatoon is a popular game. It is. Splatoon is only a popular game because it's a Nintendo exclusive. What? If Splatoon was a cross-platform game... Dog, what, what the fuck are you smoking? No one would care. What? 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 So if more people have access to the game, 
less people than the current player base would care. That That's what he's trying to convince you. And by the way, we're still on the DSP Super Bowl bash layout for some reason. But because it's a Nintendo exclusive, the Nintendo Force fanboys go out there and buy the shit out of it, make memes about it, put them all over social media, play the game constantly, have tournament leagues of it, because they feel like this is something for them. This is something that's part of their culture and their community, and therefore... Dude, what are you talking it, right? about? They accept it, they absorb it, they buy it, they share it. It's special. Maybe it's just a fun game to play. Have you considered that? No, he hates people having fun. He actually hates people having fun. Because then he feels left out. So, by the logic of sour grapes, he needs to justify why he doesn't like the thing. Because people are having fun. Unless he can profit off of it, like Pal World. Because if he wasn't playing Pal World, he would say nobody gave a fuck. And the people that are playing it are playing it just because it's popular. Which is one of the things he says about stuff that never made any sense. But he says it regardless, because it makes him feel good. But the moment that that gameplay now is no longer Nintendo exclusive and it's on another competitor's console, no one really cares. <laughs> right? Same thing with a lot of games here, right? With, for example, a lot of these first party Nintendo titles, if you think about the first party Nintendo titles, you think, why are they really special and prominent? Well, it's because they're always on a Nintendo console. It's the Nintendo IP attached to it that gives it that level of prominence, right? That's why you think people like, like I played Splatoon 1. I thought Splatoon 1 was a decent game. I did, I liked it a lot. And then within a few weeks I got bored because I was like, why do they limit you to certain game modes and maps? It doesn't make sense. And the answer was because they were padding their game. They knew that the game had limited content and by timing the times that you could do modes and maps, they would limit the amount you could play at a time so you couldn't get bored that fast because you were actually gauged and limited on what you could play it was stupid but it actually fooled people into thinking the game had more to it than it had in a nice sip rehydration when time Splatoon 2 came out i skipped it entirely and some people gave me shit for it and i was like but why it looks the same as the first game he hates nintendo in general absolutely he also hates seijuns most also, probably. This is a loser who gets his info from Twitter instead of people outside of the internet. This is the guy who calls you a mouth drooler, by the way. What a trash existence. Yep, yep. He has a thing about Nintendo he always has. And he just, just doesn't get it, man. Splatoon 3 came out two years ago. Because for him, it's all related to views and money. And if a game doesn't make the views and money that he expects to get, then nobody cares about it. Nobody ever plays it again i was gonna skip it and people were like no you should absolutely play it you need to buy it and play it because it's a nintendo exclusive it's switch you know you don't do that many games you'll be doing a disservice if you don't play it i bought it and played it and within one week all the viewers were bored and demanded i stopped playing it maybe you were just dog shit and just not fun to watch and i wasn't even bored of it yet i was still like learning it and enjoying it and everyone told me just stop playing it move on it's it sucks so i did so if anything if you're not in that very, I hate to say it, exclusive Nintendo fanboyish mindset community, a lot of the content that becomes the most prominent on Nintendo consoles, it's just not that good. I don't think Splatoon is anything that special. It's good, it's addictive, but it's not like, oh my god, you it's must play, you absolutely must enjoy this game. I don't believe that. Oh, that is also true, big guy. Thanks for pointing that out. That is not really what happened. He was playing a lot of Splatoon 3 single player and people were bored to tears out of it. So he just gave up. At all. All right. I never did. Even Splatoon 1, I said the same thing. And he's terrible because Splatoon is a team-based game. And this is the guy who blocks everybody's voice chat because they can say gout, 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 and that's going to make him embarrassed. And then he needs to mute them and tell them how much of an idiot they are reiterations it's the same game three times and they you know what i mean so now their competitor has made essentially the same game it's out for a day and a half and people are like meh right well why is it meh when it's the same game that you already praised oh because it's not on nintendo well there's your answer you're not a fan of splatoon you're a fanboy of nintendo that's why you think splatoon's good anyway that being said Amazing logic, uh, by the said, way. Well, asked what Amazing I logic. Stars on Saturday. 
I leave that because as you guys know, logic is not made to make sense. Logic doesn't make sense. And that's why his logic is so good because it doesn't make sense. Totally in your court. The ball's in your court. If you want to see me do that on Saturday, I'm open to trying it. You know, it's a free download. I have PS Plus. I'm not against. But he already just shat on it. Like, what? So he shits on it, and now I'm supposed to be excited that he's going to play it. Giving it a shot and seeing if it's something that is worth playing. Maybe we'll just do it <laughs> What is this actually about, dude? I mean, if it really does play exactly <laughs> like Splatoon, then I don't know why I would even oh my god. play as much. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. So let's see. I guess if, Unless you don't want it, in which case we don't play it. It's co totally up to you guys. I'll leave that as an option. Maybe during the marathon event, I'll poll or we'll ask and we'll see what people want or whatever. Okay, but that's, I think that would be make the most sense of a time to try it would be the day when I'm already doing big variety during this bash. That would be the time to check it out. And then, um, definitely one thing that I think I want to do during that event is some Call of Duty multiplayer. And for those who aren't aware, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 Season 2 launched right now. Like literally right now. Whoa. Epic. So what it's supposed to be is retweaking of the game, and it's a uh, different. <clears throat> um, oh, he's a big fan of tweaking. You should play it immediately. It's different uh, gameplay elements, like like making them better or more balanced. New maps supposedly added. I don't know how many, but it's supposed to be new maps and other. Yeah, things. they should add more bathrooms. That's how the game is gonna be a ten out of ten. We need more bathrooms. So if I'm gonna play Modern Warfare Three, it would make sense to do it during this event to check out that new stuff. And, you know, if I have a few drinks in me and we're playing casually and we're having fun, I'm going ham with dual handguns or something silly. Oh, he's going to go I ham. Think it's going to be a lot more. Because you get it? Because he's a pig? He's going to go ham. Ha ha ha. Even though ham gives him the gout. So he can't quite go ham 100% just like halfway. Just like half lactose intolerant. Fun and interesting. So I think that makes sense. So guaranteed this Saturday, I would say the simulated Super Bowl. Uh, you know, game like a Dragon Infinite Well, and probably some Call of Duty. If you want to see Foam Stars, if you want to see me play some Tekken, if you want to see me maybe go out do a random session of Street Fighter, whatever it may be, I would be open to that too. I just need to know what it is that you guys want to see. You know, let me know, um, and we'll go from there. All right, but I think it's going to be a nice, laid back, chill event. It's not going to be anything old. Phil is just the sad old man sitting in his house griping at the world for having fun. Truly a pitiful creature. Absolutely. And uh, I'm having enjoyment in this. So if I'm a, a fucking worthless mouth drooler, I'm willing to take that. That's the thing. I'm willing to own up to that. If that makes me a weirdo, if that makes me a degenerate, a retard, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. He's just not fine with anything that he actually is in reality. So he creates his own reality. Which, I don't know. It's not very good for you. Ultra serious. It's not going to be anything that we have to be so important. Oh my god, he absolutely must do this, this, and this during the event. It's not that serious of a deal. Uh, it's more supposed to be a relaxing day together outside of the realm of what I usually do on my streams. Um, and, <clears throat> just being very honest here, last month, I lost out on a ton of income. Oh, and again! Hell yeah! Let me hear it, Phil. Because of troll activities, these memberships, which he actually didn't lose out on a ton of income. That's a that's a misleading thing to say. The trolls gave away for free, that should not have been given away for free like that, and I got nothing for it. Okay, a lot of people now have free memberships, and obviously because of that, free memberships for their membership, and I lost. Hey, out. what about the free memberships that he can give away? Because I gave away I gave away mine for this month. So come back in fucking hold on. Yeah, I gave away all of mine because it says nicely done. You've gifted all 10 free of charge memberships this month. So come back in March. But he hasn't. He hasn't. And he hasn't even brought that up. Very interesting. On a lot of income as a result. This Saturday, if you come by the Super Bowl bash and support the stream, that would help a lot to get me back to the level I should be at. Um, notably, tips would make a lot of sense because tips I get right now and what's going to happen is this month when I get paid by YouTube it's going to be way less than what I usually make and that's going to hurt me when it comes to things like paying bills 
So tips would be great because I could use those right away this month to pay the bills and right. the gaps are the way less. Uh, yeah, the right. Result of this malicious activity against. If you know something about Dark Side Phil, is that him having money immediately is actually very bad for him. He should have money at the end of the month so he can pay his bills and not immediately so he can spend the money on dog shit and then beg for some more. Me in the channel, all right? So. Please consider, if you're someone who was going to get a membership this month, and then you didn't because you got one for free, please consider contributing this coming Saturday during the event. Okay? <laughs> so yeah, you freeloaders, you're not going to get away with it. You're not going to get away with it. You need to pay up through a different form, a different method of contribution. Because you can't just be freeloading. What are you, a Derek? Fair enough. You know that guy that constantly begs for gifted memberships? No, you're not going to get away with it. Send him a tip. So, so he can afford to have alcohol for his party that he's throwing for himself. Where you're going to be paying him to drink alcohol. That's coming up on Saturday. I'm very excited for that. Sunday we're back to our normal React Day schedule. Where it's DSP versus the internet on the first stream. And then I'm going to play more Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth on the late stream. Monday. Doing that. Yeah, and we night. get a nice buffered skip. So that would be that Wednesday night, February 14th. Late night stream will be our Bruh. very first. No way we're doing hype for shit that's happening next Wednesday. It's literally a week from now, but it's special because Cat is going to be showing up. First ever cooperative gameplay stream here on DSP Gaming. Really cool. Except we forgot the cooperative Halloween stream that they had where Cat literally did not want to play games. He offered. He was like, hey, Kat, do you want to play, what was it, Silent Hill, whatever, whatever? And she said no. Okay. But that was five years ago. She's now a different person. <laughs> and by different person, I basically mean a carbon copy of himself, uh, aside from the snorts. She should start snorting as well. That's how you know they're soulmates. Cool. So that's the schedule. Okay. Um... We talked about Tech and A. The other thing I want to talk about today before we get to shout outs. Yesterday, I asked for your feedback over on DSP Throwback. What feedback? Well, I wanted to know what games would you like to see me react to, all right, when it comes to the new retro react. <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> now that you brought it up, Timo, um, it reminded me that the first thing he said. When he unveiled Cat for the first time in five years, the upgraded Cat, the Cat version 2.0, the first thing he said is, "No, this is not a pregnancy announcement." What? Uh, what would make us think it's a pregnancy announcement, Phil? Mm, I, I don't know what Phil. Help me out on this one, Phil. Series that I'm doing a as pregnancy an, announcement. <laughs> So far, we've done Red Dead Redemption 1, <laughs> and we've done Dark Souls 1. That's unironically how he kicked off of the stream. Yes, you guys, I know she's fat, but she's not pregnant, okay? So stop asking. And those went really well. Those Why would we think she's pregnant? People who were there were really engaged and attentive and supportive and loved it and cannot wait for more. So I asked for some suggestions. So I did get some interesting suggestions, all right? Number one, absolutely everyone wants Heavy Rain in the mix. Everyone was like, man, Heavy Rain was this close to winning this last week. Absolutely, we want this in the mix as an option. All right, so Heavy Rain, 100% will be an option. Of course. Another interesting... Um, Wait, did, did he say that on both streams? Because I just know the first one. I, I don't know about the second one. I haven't noticed that. It might be true, but I'm not sure about it. That people came up with that I had totally forgotten about. How about this one? You ready for this one? Indigo prof. Instead of taking his wife out to a hotel and have some romance or a dinner, he wants to play video games. This is the definition of a loser. He did this to Pandalee too. Well, at least Pandalee got a staycation. At least she, she had the backbone to actually ask for one and get it. That's why she got evicted from the household because she had too much of a backbone. That was her problem. She had too much of an opinion. Cat is a different person by now being two people in one. She will 100% be using the Southwest Airlines puppy of size policy when they go to his parents' funerals. <laughs> he's gonna beg for multiple seats. Yeah, he's gonna beg for... 
<laughs> He's gonna beg for airline tickets. See. God damn Do you it. Remember what Indigo prophecy is? That was oh the my god. I, I, I don't think he's gonna make it to one of the funerals. He's gonna make a shitty ass excuse. I don't think he's going there for both. Because, you know, both of them are not gonna die at the same time. So that's, uh, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not looking forward to them dying, but it's gonna be an interesting event, to say the least. ...that Quantic Dream made. And that was a special playthrough that I did as a Halloween playthrough. Uh, in 2010, I want to say. Oh yeah, it's and a David Cage I really game. I liked that playthrough because it, it the game looks like shit. Okay, it does. It looks terrible, but it's funny. It is so goofy and funny. With it, at first it starts super serious with like a gory murder, and then all of a sudden it's like these weird things going on. By the end of the game, there's fucking aliens and shit. It's the weirdest game. You just described every David Cage game, but. To, that it's it's so trying to be so serious, but it ends up just being goofy as fuck. Because the Detroit game, that, that whole narrative of the game is about how androids have just... Uh, they have to have as much rights as people because they're basically people, except they're not, if you start thinking about it for a single second. You know, for me to go back and actually comment on it again would be pretty neat. And you would get the bad ending if you went against that narrative that androids have the same amount of rights as people. Because that's what I tried. I think to look at my old gameplay of it and do commentary would be pretty entertaining. So I would say right now, <clears throat> okay, the prime candidates would be more Dark Souls, Heavy Rain, or Indigo Prophecy. All right? Now, I'm looking for a fourth option, and some people are saying, um, Fallout 3. And here's the thing, like, I love Fallout 3, but I don't know if we can do it. We'd have to research it and see if those first, like, like, it has to be about two and a half hours of gameplay that's not gonna have that copywritten radio music on it. Oh There's my exactly god, that. Jesus right Christ. Now, the stream's gonna end up getting muted as well as the videos. Like, that music... No, it's not going to get muted because you're the one who's muting it, Phil. You're just straight up lying here. He you muted because you want to get prophecy. money. It has sex in it. Oh, Indigo Prophecy has sex in it? Oh, uh, well, we're going to be cringing at that part because, you know, past Phil made some sex jokes when that was happening. In current Phil, he doesn't like sex because sex is for immature people and people that want to have kids. And he's neither. Has been claimed, blocked, and, f and just fucked beyond belief on YouTube. I know how stupid that sounds. Yeah, I, I don't have sex because I'm too mature. I just look at uh, Drake. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Like that, but YouTube is just. <laughs> I'm gonna give more ammo to the guy that just make fanfics about me having sex with dudes. Dumb as hell. So anyone who played Fallout 3 and had the radio on gets screwed over. Um, and I'm almost sure that in my first playthrough I had the radio on. You know, so I'm not sure how that would work, you know? I would love to commentate on my original Fallout 3 playthrough, but I don't know if we would be able to, um, and see if it's, val again, I'll tell you this, I really don't care that much about the ad revenue. I don't. What, what? It's, but, uh, but most, you do though. I'll probably make, you know, a couple, you know, dozen bucks. A couple of dozen bucks at most, which is, uh, I think overly ambitious, but sure, keep going ad revenue on these videos it's not that big of a deal to me but i don't want the videos muted if the video's muted there's no point in making the video but they only get muted if they got blocked worldwide and most videos just get blocked in russia and i mean i mean russia it's like 0.5 percent of anybody's viewer base unless you're actually russian it's so, so no they they don't get muted automatically they get claimed at worst, they get blocked worldwide, in which case you kind of have to mute that specific part that got blocked. Because I know how this shit works, and it doesn't make any sense when he's saying it. Stupid that YouTube does that. That they're, Oh, we're going to fucking block your content now. Because like, I play copyrighted blocks, shit all the like, time. I hate you. Like, why can't you just abide by the law? Why do you make your own fucking rules up? I just... I, I It baffles me. <laughs> it does. I You know, it drives me nuts. So... I'm, I'd be interested in Fallout for sure, I would, but we would have to find a way or, or confirm that it would be all right, at least for like the first two and a half hours, because usually these streams last about two to two and a half hours. We'd have to be sure that that was okay. So I don't know if we'd have to go wa go back and watch the original playthrough. Is it, is it listenable? I guess what I could try to do 
is go back and find the original playthrough and see, you know, what restrictions were placed on the videos. I'm almost positive that those videos were blocked or muted in a ton of territories because of the music, you know. Um, I'm Somebody just getting blocked. I know I replayed Fallout Three on this channel. Okay. Are we gonna watch that playthrough? Oh no, we're just gonna check if any of the videos got blocked because we have to do this during the podcast because it's a dark side fill stream. This can't wait until later because this is his work time and we do all the work during the work time. Once he clocks out, it's WWE Champions time. Here it is. I love it. I love it. Was the last time that I played Fallout 3. That's good for you. So I actually replayed Fallout 3 in direct capture. I did. I didn't even remember that I had done that. March of 2014, I did this. I have been on work calls for the past 30 minutes period. <laughs> I come back and he's still talking about Fallout 3. He is so meaningful today. Look, Logan, you might want to rewind the stream because there was a really nice segment about the FGC and um, addressing the ALT tweet about Justin Wong in a kind of a roundabout way. So you, you might want to check that out. You know, I'm just giving you a hint. It was a, uh, it was something. How do I not remember that? Okay. That's remarkable. I don't recall that at all. Does anyone remember me replaying it in 2014? No. I don't. <laughs> I literally don't. Here, I'm going to try to go to the earliest parts. Now, if I remember correctly, I didn't have the radio on for that playthrough. Oh, I played it all through 2013. Here we go. Okay, that's even before the, the condo in Washington. I'm checking the playthrough right now. Wow, I actually played that game throughout the entire year of 2013. Oh, Jesus oh, Christ. Yeah, We're getting we that kind of a segment. Blocked, partially blocked. Let me check on this. Cannot be watched or monetized in certain countries. Okay, but then you, you didn't cut out the part then. You didn't mute it. So why would you be concerned that you're going to mute it now? Russia. There well, you go. I'm That's really what I said. My Russian fans. If I watch Fallout 3... <laughs> Those poor Russians, they're going to be so de so upset that they can't watch my retro react to Fallout 3. Oh, man. This one is all yeah. screwed up. You know, there's some, some poor guy in Russia in, like, the middle of Siberia sitting there in his PC just bashing the keyboard, being, Bled, suka! Fucking pizdets dark side feel, bled! Yeah, wow, entire- Dark side feel, Fallout 3, bled! parts are missing look at this wow yeah all these parts are missing my favorite thing about uh about russians is when i used to play dota 2 and they would say lobster all the time and then eventually i found out that lobster was their attempt at telling you to get cancer because you know lobster therefore crab therefore cancer so yes russians are super super positive people Unless you're playing them in video games or you're engaged in a war with them. So I can see right now. Oh, yes, and they also I said Gamburger. Gamburger, blad. Gamburger, suka. See what happened. A lot of these parts got blocked, and I had to edit them to cut out the parts that were making it so I couldn't, they could not be viewed on YouTube. I'm staring at it right now. Okay. Oh, man, so what does this mean for Dark Side fill in 2024? Is it is that it you can't do the playthrough? This one? It is. Uh, yeah, it looks like, and it was the earlier parts too. Yep. So here's the deal: when you're in the bunker, which is the beginning of the game, it doesn't play any of the music. I'm looking. We're at like six to seven. Okay, I started having problems with the playthrough when we got to the oh dude I'm, I'm fucking skipping this get the fuck out of here so yeah so basically we'd be watching if we're doing this this man right here mr put in right finger pig face yeah mr uh put in your finger in your nose that's that's what it is retro react stream oh yeah also the the russians in counter-strike they're even better because it's all like I just said, Rajbi bled, Rajbi smoke, Rash. 
Um, why no rush? Why no rush, Blad? It would basically be about fucking Gamburger. Like two and a half hours. That would be like twelve, like around fifteen parts. Just the first in the first fifteen parts of my Fallout Three playthrough from twenty thirteen. <laughs> they were the best, man. One, that two, game without three, Russians four, is just five, unplayable. Six, seven, eight. That's the, the whole charm of the game is just playing against locked, Russians or with muted, Russians, even or better. Blamed for copyright. Because then you get to hear the voice chat. Now, did I have the radio on? That I don't know. And by the way, we would not be watching my playthrough from 2013. We'd be watching my original playthrough. I'm going to be watching you know, something you know, else in like five week. minutes if you keep what going. What I'd like to do is over next week run the poll to have people vote. Oh, what is this smug smile about? Now, now you got my... You got my attention, Fadil. So Mr. Fadil. You react to your older gameplay videos. What is this shit eating grin? Dan, have you checked out the DSP throwback channel? Oh, yeah, the one that has the typo in the intro? Uh, for those people that weren't here in the beginning, let's check out the DSP throwback channel. DSP throwback. Oh, I fucked this up big style, but it still shows up because YouTube is great. Uh, so yeah, let's see. I think, is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this one? Which one has the fucking intro? Oh, this one just has a PNG as the intro. Does it have the actual? Oh, yeah, here it is. DSP throwback, where the past means the play troughs. The past means the play troughs. Meets, by the way. It meets the play troughs. This motherfucker has a fucking typo in the intro to a video. That he hasn't even fucking made. He didn't even make the shit. He didn't even bother to read what it says. Oh. And that's why you get this smile. That's why you get it. The play you troughs. You were over there the other day and you actually contributed to the stream. So I'm, I'm well aware that you know of the stream. And also, even if there wasn't a play, uh, even if there wasn't a typo. What does the past means the playthroughs supposed to mean? Oh, and I fucking rewinded this big style. Shit. Reopen. What is it supposed to mean? The past means the meets the playthrough? What? I don't even get it. But anyways, let's rewind time. By like a bunch. Shout out, shall we? Let's do let's the shout outs now. Sounds good to me. Joker question mark. Who did a super chat and says, have you swallowed the black pill? And if not, why? I don't know what that is. No, I've no black pill. pill and the blue pill. You I should talk to the villain. Pill, so I don't know what you're talking about. The villain has swallowed so many black pills. He almost overdosed. That's why uh, a hooker stood him up when he was late. Yeah, that dude was late to a hooker appointment. That's how much of a bum that guy is. But thank you, Joker, for the first super chat of the day. Or I should say Joker for the first super chat of the day because... There's a question mark. There you go. Right? <clears throat> cool. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Um, First tip of the day. <clears throat> is, uh... One minute cuck? No. Easy Peasy 91 did a $5 tip. First tip of the day. Let's get an animation. Let's see what Easy Peasy's take is. By the way, if you're wondering why I look so bright today, it's because it's so sunny outside. You don't. That that sun is still coming through my blinds. Nope. You look as ghoulish as always, Phil. Uh, I guess that's a compliment or whatever you want it to be. That's just how it looks. Even though they're down. I'm going to try to close them even further, but I think that's as far as they close. Telling you and blind peace. check. Peacefully and professionally. Wait, what? The sun is so bright. Hold on. I want to see that face. message. Okay. So Easy Peasy 91 says the following. I think your hate watchers are actually the ones telling you to play peacefully and professionally. Instead of just being yourself, at least in fighting games. They tell you that because they want you to be boring and get less views. Really? I've seen you play fighting games a lot. But then, if he's boring as shit, what, what are we going to talk about? No, I want him to be himself. Because when he is himself, we get a lot to talk about. And today, oh, he has been himself. Lots of times I can tell you're upset and want to say something, but you hold back because of viewers. You're actually at your best when you're natural and funny. Get your fill at DSP Play Troughs Pig. Yes. Oh, that delicious fill at the Play Troughs. Which can mean rage and swearing. Mm. That's, that's what... What... That's like, so what? It's a fighting game. I used to play Tekken with friends in real life and we would shit on each other. That's the whole fun of it. Yeah, but you actually have friends and Phil doesn't. Don't that's the difference. Me. He shits on random people on the internet. 
how streams go, you're definitely at your best when you're going all out and funny and raging. Oh, Pretty funny. Sure say otherwise are the ones who want to see you fail. Are you going to say something about that? What do you think about that, Phil? Are you going to be yourself? I guess the question is... So it's basically it your hate watchers give you actual advice that you can use to protect your public image so you get to do this as a business for longer instead of embarrassing yourself to such extent that there is incredible amounts of clips that anybody can pull up at any point that make you look bad. Uh, but sure, you should listen to your real fans, Phil. I'm, I'm sure they think the best for you and in your best interest. Acceptable and how far is too far, right? Really? Like, that's the question. And I don't have an answer for that, you know? Because when I'm in the heat of the moment and I'm upset at a fighting game, and if I really feel like someone did not know what the hell they were doing and got lucky and beat me, I get legitimately heated, like legitimately upset. But the difference is, you know, so if I... If I am playing a fighting game and I lose to like lack of character knowledge like I'm doing a lot in Tekken, I'm I actually don't get as upset. I'm like, darn, damn, I lost exactly to 100% of character knowledge because I don't know what that character is capable of. I don't know that their high level mix up looks like that. So I can't defend. I can't sure. get out of the way. And you know, I actually usually don't get upset. That's actually the, the only excuse I get because, well, yeah, you lose at fighting games because you don't know the character that good. I understand it. What about that? But. Um, that's, that's one of the, the rare excuses. Everything else is lag, my move didn't come out, you're a worthless human, you're a mouth drooler. I could keep going. What I get upset about is if I feel like someone sucks and is just mashing buttons and they get away with stuff. There's some characters in Tekken right now, Law is one of them, I think Jin is one of them, where you can just, when someone's knocked down, you can run up and start mashing buttons and you track them. So if they try to get up, you can get lucky and just get another stupid hit, a counter hit, at least to another grounding and another juggle. It's like, but you didn't earn that. You just ran up and mashed buttons and hoped for the best and got lucky with another hit. You didn't time that. You didn't know what you were doing, right? And that frustrates me. I do feel like there's uh, certain characters in Tekken that are just easy mode characters. Like, they're meant to be that way. And that's fine. Like, that's since the days of the early Tekkens. Like I said, Tekken 3, Eddie Gordo was the dawn of that. Like, they wanted to make an easy mode character that people could just mash and feel like they know how to play a fighting game. And it's always continued throughout the years with Tekken. There's always been a handful of characters like that where you just mash the buttons and get away with stupid shit. Um, and again, it's, it's on me to lose that I'm losing to that. Because I don't have the character knowledge to stop it. If I play more tech and I'll learn that. I'll learn the mashing bullshit and I won't get caught by it anymore. I'll punish it, right? But I thought you were going to play it casually. Oh, wait. We actually didn't come to a conclusion on that conversation. So I guess we're going to keep talking about it for a few more weeks. Right until now, nobody here, literally you know. cares about the but, game anymore. No, I understand what you're saying. He's, and he gets he, to quit know. it. It's hard to figure out like what's, what's the balance. Because I can't just say whatever I want. I can't be like super duper personally insulting even though you are and nothing really happened to you outside of people clipping you and making fun of you on the internet such as scrub quotes to every person i play at the same time i should have the ability to criticize and say things about someone's gameplay if i feel that it's inferior but what's the happy medium between the two at what point do you try to be entertaining well this is the guy that constantly talks about what constitutes valid criticism and his criticism towards people is, you suck, you're a mouth drooler, you're a worthless human. I don't know if that constitutes constructive criticism. But not insulting, right? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Back what? in the day, this wasn't a concern. But, it, oh, dude, does he need to be like 65 years old so he can find out the difference between making a personal attack at somebody and just trash talking him in a video game? I mean, come on. At least if you're going to make it personal shit on them, just own up to it. Just like, own up to it. I do. I make personal attacks against him, other pre people on the internet, constantly. I own up to it. I'm toxic as fuck. What are you going to do? Back in the day when I played Street Fighter 4... I'm a fallible went. human. You say whatever the hell you wanted and no one cared and people laughed and you got popular for it. I was known as the toxic Street Fighter 4 guy and it got me ridiculous amounts of attention on YouTube back in the day. Now, you try to play Street Fighter 6 that way, and everyone hates you. 
everyone on the internet, oh, you're a piece of shit, you're a toxic fuckface. Put him on fucking scrub quotes and all that. Oh, oh man, he really is pissed off at being put on scrub quotes. And even though, like, scrub quotes can make a whole different account that's just called scrub quotes DSP and post them all day. I'm not doing anything different today than I he used to. He is so pissed fact, off. Today it's way more tame than it used to be, but now I'm the heinous villain. But back now then, he's the villain. And good and people got the joke. I no, you were always the villain. That's why the FGC didn't like you. I just, I don't get it. Society changed, right? And you know that scrub quotes could use a clip like this. They could just clip this and post it on their account and say they got a shout out. And like a thousand people are gonna like the post. Anyway, um, let's continue. <clears throat> I got a $5 tip from Dan the Man. Thank you, Dan the Man, for a $5 tip. I appreciate that very much. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Dan Thank the Man. And supporting my content. Okay. Very good. I received a $25 tip from one minute, from one minute man, man who was going to have a comment about um, Baldur's Gate 3. Don't forget you have a quest pending for the mausoleum when we get there. Okay. Okay. Abdullah, re his membership for 15 months says, will you be replaying Resident Evil 6? I would like to think that someday I would. Game? Really? Okay, that's it. That's her whole answer. Except I skipped the, the 30 seconds after the answer where he was just padding it out. Someone said Tekken doesn't seem to gel with me like Street Fighter does. I don't know if I agree with that. I, why would you say that? Haven't you noticed that, like, I'm getting into it, I'm starting to learn stuff, I'm doing well, I'm getting combos, I'm getting punishes now. Yeah, sure. When I have a good match of Tekken where I feel like <laughs> Dude. I'm genuinely outplaying the enemy, I'm having a great time with it. I am. You just can't even take this L, that he's not as good at, in Tekken as he is in Street Fighter. And that's something that he admitted in the start of this stream. Oh my god, that he was prominent with Street Fighter and not with Tekken, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. Just Get out of here. I was playing Street Fighter 6, so I don't... I, here's the thing, I feel it's the opposite. I don't feel that it's like, I'm not liking Tekken. I think it's that, in general, my, viewing, my viewers either like or don't like Tekken. Like, a lot of my viewers just like Street Fighter more, they like that gameplay more, they like that universe more. And now that I'm putting that time into a different franchise, they're kind of upset about that. Oh, why is he playing this other game instead of just playing more Street Fighter, right? That's my take because outside of that, I don't see the difference. I'm playing it well. I'm learning these characters. I'm doing advanced combos and moves. It's not like I'm playing like a scrub or anything, right? So I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. Really, Trigger says Resident Evil 6 is actually hot garbage as a single-player game, only good with co-op. Jade, I will see you tonight for Like a Dragon. Sounds good. I'm very much looking forward to that stream. All right, guys, we got a little bit of extra time. If you want to toss a question my way, please tag me in the chat. At and Q&A. See what you guys want to talk about. Um, the landscapers have gone away. I don't hear them, but I get the feeling they're going to come back now when I start the game, which is going to frustrate me because I'm going to close the door, and then immediately it's going to get hot as shit in here because the sun... Oh, my God. Just wear a T-shirt. Ooh. Uh, and, y you know, this is getting a slow-mo, slow-mo replay instantly. Hot as shit in here because the sun is out. Ugh. An actual man-child. This is what an actual man-child looks like. Actual man-child. Certified man-child. This sounded like an actual whale call. Ugh. Did I hear that Wings quit the LolCow <laughs> podcast because Keem was giving his trolls a platform? Uh, someone had mentioned that a week or two ago on here that he was quitting the podcast. That's the extent of it that I know. I've literally... 
never listen to a second of the podcast, don't know anything about the podcast, don't care about the podcast, don't want to listen to the podcast. The only the way, reason I know about it is because you guys came on here and said, are you aware that like entire episodes of the podcast are about you? And I'm like, no, I... Because they are not? Uh, they're not? No, they're not. They're just not. Don't know why they would be. I'm not part of the show. Because you're a lol cow, and it's the lol cow podcast. Connect the dots, Phil. I never agreed to be part of the show. I never even had a discussion about the show with anyone. Um, I don't care about the show. I'm not going to talk about the show. Uh, despite you already having talked about the show multiple times before. And it always starts like this. It always starts like this. Oh, somebody in chat says this. Well, is this true? Uh, I don't know, man. I, I don't watch it, but is it, is it true? He just loves gossiping so much, but he tries to pretend like he doesn't. And it always ends up like this. I think again, what, with a show like that. And again, now, now we start talking about it. You see, he doesn't talk about it, but now we're just talking about it. What they want to do is they want to they want to talk shit to goad someone into talking about it. So now they have something to talk about on their show because they need to feed off of others to have a show because without feeding off the drama of others, they have no show because that's what happens with these drama circles. These people have no talent. So they need to goad other people into reactions so that they can then react to their reactions because that's how they make content. Well, I, I think their, their strategy of, of just calling Wings a pedophile over and over again has been working so far, but now that he quit, I don't know. Maybe they're just going to start calling Boogie a pedophile over and over again. Not like, oh, we have a show with all these interesting set topics. Today. But I don't know. Unlike Phil, I actually don't watch the show, so I don't know. Cover, it's just nonsensical drama, right? So, yeah, like, I don't care uh, about the show at all. I never did. People outright told me, are you aware that on the show, they're not only doing entire segments about you, but they're all saying things like, "We, Phil, we know you're listening. And I was like, no, I don't. Why, I'm not listening. I, but but how do you know that they said this? I've not heard a second of it. The only <laughs> but somebody sent them the clip or something, or they told them that they say this. I hear is secondhand from people in my chat. Uh huh. One of my fans telling me on the on the back end. You know, are you aware that there's entire hateful segments? Hey, what's the back end? What is the back end? Is it the Discord that doesn't exist? Entire shows about you. I'm like, no, I don't give a fuck. No, they don't do entire shows about them. I think they they had like one clip right at the beginning when the podcast was started, and now it's it's not about him. I don't think they they talked about him at all. Right now, it's all about wings and how he's being a bitch. I don't give a shit enough about the people on that show to watch or listen to it. What about Boogie that you wanted to have um, as a part of your new series? DSP asks it, and then it didn't happen because Boogie didn't want to do it. I guess. But he had agreed to it at first, right? He doesn't care about any of them, by the way. Except the guy he cared about. To, to watch or listen to the show, I'd have Even though, he also said that if Keemstar wasn't involved, he wanted to do a podcast with Boogie and Wings. That's what he said. But he doesn't care about any of them. Um, anymore. To care about the people on it, I don't. So, you know, I don't waste my time and stuff I don't care about, you know? I'm not gonna watch content from things that don't interest me. Lol cow culture does not fucking interest me in the least, so I don't care. Who Which is pretty fucking ironic because of all the communities that he really desperately wanted to be a part of, the lol cow community is one that he's naturally a part of. Who's on the show, I don't, you know what I mean? It, the thing that got me is I made that abundantly clear and then you got someone like Turkey Tom who made a documentary about me and then he tried to say he wanted to, to just like interview me and I'm like, I'll consider it. And I asked you guys and you guys abundantly told me, no, don't do it. So I didn't do it. And then he literally said in a video, oh darn, now I can't milk Phil anymore. I guess I'm done milking him. Yeah, cause you're, that's, that's all you're good for, bro. You gotta start embracing that. Otherwise, otherwise this is gonna, you know, you see. I was thinking to my, in my head, you see what happens. These people actually think it's healthy to say and that they want to milk other people. Like they think that's normal behavior. Oh, I just milked someone today for toxic content so I could make money. It's like, do you not understand how fucked that is? How immoral that is? How, how dangerous that is? Oh, moral oh. Phil, by the way. 
I mean, I can't, I can't believe people sleep at night doing that. Except <laughs> that I understand there's a lot of people on this planet who have no conscience. Yes, sure, Phil. Hurt as long as they make money. So, <laughs> and that's what I mean. Like, that's the kind of people who are involved with that show. You know, who the fuck wants to be involved with a show that says, we're a bunch of lol cow farmers who milk you for content. Are you out of your fucking mind? That's the most disgusting, toxic thing I've ever heard in my life. I don't want to touch that with a zillion foot pole. That, you know what I mean? I don't care how much money you're going to pay me. You're out of your fucking mind. You'd have to be a dumb ass to be involved with that in any capacity. Whether you're a lol cow or a farmer or whoever, you'd have to actually have low mental capacity to be involved in that content in any way. Including making it or watching and listening to it. This is wild because this guy who has therapy sessions with his chat is going to tell you what is healthy. And this guy who pretends he is so broke that he can't buy a bottle of alcohol so his fans can have sympathy towards him so they can give him more money is going to talk about fucking morals. You have to be an idiot. And I'm not an idiot. I guess you got to be an idiot. <laughs> so that's why I have nothing to do with it. <clears throat> <clears throat> that kind of content, it's very simple. It's the immoral milking the dumb. That's exactly what it is. Immoral people who don't give a shit how they make their money, milking stupid people of their money. That's wild projection. It's trash and I don't do it. Wild. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> this is the same guy who denied his wife a honeymoon because he's too addicted to spending money on actual pictures of wrestlers. Who's talking about morality. He fucked over his soulmate so he can get a couple more extra Hogan's. Um, let's see here. That's the guy talking about morality here. I received a $6.66 tip from Ugly Tuna Roll. I got into Yakuza Like a Dragon because of you. Laughing out loud, I was never even into these kind of games, but Infinite Wealth is my first one. Ironically, I've been living in Japan for 15 years now, and they love that oh, studio. Too bad Cat prefers chocolate milk big up to Ron. Yeah, there we go, yeah. And also, this is the same guy who made his actual mother that he said to his own words that she could die any time. He made her pay his fucking taxes because he's addicted to pictures of wrestlers. That's the guy talking morality. He's exploited his own mother and his own father that had to pay for his wedding. This is the moral person, by the way. Cheers, man. Yeah, cheers, man. I'm taking a sip for that. Not, not surprising. I mean, that studio- And it's not surprising. Studio is one of the game studios that's trying to represent Japanese culture in gaming, right? And it's not just a bunch of anime shit. It's actually real Japanese people and real Japanese culture. So <clears throat> it's not surprising how prominent it is. <clears throat> Playing a Japanese stuff for Jasper Kitty at the pet store. Like I said, I'm going Oh, now we're going to talk, talk about the day off. Tomorrow, Jade? Um, gee, let's see. Well, tomorrow I got to get some stuff for Jasper Kitty at the pet store. Like I said, I'm going to the liquor store because I'm going to see what kind of liquor I can get for the Super Bowl event on Saturday. Uh, I got to go grocery shopping, and I'm buying special ingredients for the, the recipes my wife will be making for the Super Bowl event. Um, and I think uh, likely I'll see if my wife wants to play more Tekken 8. Last week, she went through um, the character story for Victor, and she plays my mind Victor. Now we get cat lore that is pretty useless. I'm very curious if she will play it more or not she's so into like a dragon right now i'm playing the living hell out of like a dragon right now so i don't know how much more she'll play it or not i guess we'll see <clears throat> uh no cat is not going to be in the super bowl event like i said cat will be here when she, there's stuff that she wants to be a part of right now she really wants to do the dondoko island co-op that's the next thing she wants to be involved in so that's why we're hoping to get that going this week coming up yeah, we gotta pander to her like she's a fucking royalty or something so she can come up on stream. Because she got too bored of the questions people are asking. So now we gotta talk about how we can appeal to Kat so she can show up again. So we can milk the, the remaining dents out of a couple more extra bucks. But she's not interested in the Super Bowl stuff, no. Yeah. Notice how he hasn't talked about ha Kat having a job for a while now. She hasn't come back for from work. She hasn't been getting up early to go to work. It's kind of suspicious, might think. <clears throat> but that's just my speculation. 
That's all I have to go by have is I what he says. Chocolate for Valentine's? Why are you pretending like you don't know what this question means? Have I ever gave chocolate for Valentine's? Yes. When you have a girlfriend, do you give her chocolate for Valentine's Day? You know, like a box of chocolates or something chocolate uh, as a gesture of being romantic? Have you done that or have you not? That's a pretty simple question. It's either a yes or a no. Phil has a mother complex. I mean, just look at what had happened to Kat. Yeah. Talk it's... about the comedy slash tragedy. I mean, dude, not just that. He constantly, whenever he says my wife, he mixes up with my mom. So it ends up like my mom, my, my wife. I guess. I I'm guess. Sure at some point in my life, I gave. Yes or not. As a present for Valentine's Day. I mean, I'm 41 years old. So yeah. Bro, you had two girlfriends in your life. You either did or you don't. And you can remember that, I'm sure. What's funny is, so someone had said this the other day too. Someone said, this year are you going to do anything with chocolate for Valentine's Day? And I was like, chocolate for Valentine's Day? We still have chocolate downstairs from Christmas. We had this giant okay, bag but of it's Gucci's not nuggets we bought. It's about the gesture, my guy. I'm not saying that you should, but it's a thing people do for Valentine's Day, specifically. Uh, at Costco in like early December and we also had a specialty like specialty chocolates that we bought and we had a few of them on like Christmas Eve together bro this guy is never beating the autistic allegations and also the homosexual allegations but it's uh, that's all it is it's allegations until we get it confirmed and since then we put them in the in the, the but for now on like I don't I don't know man the the uh, he's not beating them uh what do you call it the uh, pantry and we haven't even taken them out to eat them again so it's like we're not, listen, I love chocolate, but we, we stay away. We stay away from the stuff that's tempting. So, we, I, you know, we don't even think about that. No, I'm not, not doing anything with chocolate for Valentine's Day. If we tip a certain amount, can a certain character get played in Tekken 8? I would do that for Kuma. Right now, I have no plans to do anything like that, no. Sure. Right now. Maybe if we have a slow stream, Should the Super Bowl maybe we're going to consider it. Day? Uh... I don't know. There's a lot of weird federal holidays I'm not even aware of. There's days that like the yeah, everything's closed. It's like what? Why? What is today? I don't even know what today is. Is it a holiday today? <laughs> right? I don't know. Thoughts on Costco food court food? The only thing I've ever had there, Turtle Dude, was their hot dog, and the hot dog was super tasty, and and, and I loved it. But I've never had anything else there. Yeah, I've heard legends about the Costco hot dog specifically. Things about the food, but I never tried it. Dr. Kinnis says, I'm noticing more ads recently. Have you seen an increase in ad revenue? Uh, not really. <laughs> I haven't really been looking, quite frankly. But no, I don't think that there's been any uptick in ad revenue for me. Yeah, wait, you haven't been looking, but it's the guy who constantly tries and convince you that he's penny pinching. The weird part is... <clears throat> and he constantly looks at the memberships and how much money he makes from memberships. But ad revenue? Nah, I don't know, man. If I go to analytics, I don't even right? care. This month, so I, I shouldn't even say this month. I should say since 2024 started, my overall views are up. My overall time watched is actually way up. I that's that's just that's just a lie, man. That's just a lie. I actually have like way more overall hours watched in, on my content than from December. But all my revenue was way down because ads number one dried up. So ad revenue went way down and I lost out on a ton of the, the membership revenue that I normally would have. So it was like a double, a double drop for me. So likely it would end up being, uh, you know, a while. I would probably think probably the next two months. Typically you would see around like March, April, there's a big uptick in ad revenue on YouTube again, because there's a various different things happening at that time frame that the advertisements, you know, step up again um sometimes you see it this week for the super bowl i haven't particularly seen too much of an increase in advertisements for the super bowl this week so maybe youtube just didn't get it this year i don't know they used to youtube used to have like tons of ads for the super bowl but i don't even think they have that this year yeah he really needs some of that super bowl ad revenue because he's a big fan he's having a special event based all around the super bowl all right anything else guys? Hey, what was that have that this year we get an ear pick in a, a wipe in the shirt look at this 
and we just wipe it. Oh All my right, God! He didn't even bother to wipe it in his pajamas or his chair. It's just in the shirt. Come on, man. That's an actual shirt you can wear more than once I without me making fun of it. Typical remix might have not bad bunny jump on a remix rolling on the floor laughing. Viva me Latino style people. Puerto Rico Cuba raised fist medium dark skin tone full score. Uh yes. Uh, this is actually I'm looking for a Spanish speaking rapper or something or a performer to jump on a remix with the on the Eat It Tropical remix. I already have one in the works, but let's see how it turns out. What else would you like to chat about today? Nothing? Nothing. No Nothing. chats. We're done. Nothing to talk about. Are we no actually one's... done? We've said our piece. No, he done. keeps doing the podcast for, for 10 more minutes, by the way. He's thinking chocolate like if he ever gave the doo-doo from his S rainbows to a girl, ak ak. No, uh, d dude. Dude. Maybe not not that kind of a chocolate. Submission? Not the chocolate you eat with a spoon. The one you eat with, you know. Day by day, he's proving that his audience are regarded as hell. He just said that his views are up a ton but his revenue is low. Does that make sense? That... He's getting manipulated just like their daily lives. You're it's not... Pathetic. You're not supposed to think if it makes sense. As long as it makes sense to him, it should make sense to everybody. And if it doesn't make sense to you, then uh, you're a dunce, I guess. Excuse me. Sorry about the belching today. Um, oh yeah, since as since you apologized, it's perfectly Gamer fine, subs, I guess. AKA G subs, they're a successful rival competitor to G Fuel. They don't have a history of cow towing to pressure from haters. What? They've been partnering with just about any content creator, many of which have a smaller following than you. I think it'd be best to collab. Bro, really? Gamer subs. Gamer subs. Oh, now he's gonna look it up. I'm gonna look it up too. So gamer subs. Uh, gamer subs dot gg. Wow, it's a gamer thing. Oh, and gamer we got a... subs offers. Oh no, 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 no. Do you see this anime girl in this very specific position? No, clearly we cannot. We cannot enter a business relationship with these perverts, these disgusting perverts. No. This is. Look at this waifu cups. Waifu cups? He's married, you fucking dunce. Waifu cups. Toe friendly, sugar free, waifu cups. And low calorie energy drinks and powders for esports athletes. What am I, a degenerate? Shop online to get free samples of waifu cups. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Are you kidding me? I gotta read this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i gave you the reaction before he even gave it you see we pre-ordered the reaction Gamer and now it's coming through 100 percent waifu content i'm not even <laughs> kidding you it's all anime girls and and husbandos too and husbandos no no husbandos it's got husbandos <laughs> Come the fuck on, man. Waifu oh, cups and husbando terrible, cups. It's so bad. What am I, a fucking pervert? What am I, somebody who likes having sex? What? Sex is just for people that want to have children, you fucking idiots. Doesn't even feel that good. Unless it's with a dude. Oh, I definitely want to drink the energy drink. All you have to do is lower the pitch of your voice to sound like Bad Bunny Baby Cool Puerto Rico full score raised fist medium dark skin tone. Yeah, but but also it has to be in Spanish. Spoon chocolate what makes it special. Flavored water. Uh, yeah, the, the silver spoon <laughs> chocolate starfish in the Costco hot dog flavored water. That's a Limb Biscuit album in the making. Called Grandpa's Ashes. I'm not kidding. They have a flavor called grandpa's ashes like you pretend like you're eating the cremated remains of your grandfather in an energy drink you know what if if people hit up gamer subs enough we can get them as a sponsor for tbs that's a good idea that would be very fun and we can make some really good plugs off of that like actual really good godlike plugs
Uh, yeah. Do they have the ooze flavor? Do they have the the homeless looking man flavor? Do we have the gout crystal flavor? Well, if I were to have a sponsorship with Gamer Subs, I would demand that they make a husbando cup of me posing. It would be the DSP husbando cup. Uh huh. It would be the deadbeat flavor. That's how it's called, the deadbeat husband flavor. You drink it and you instantly want to get addicted to gacha games. Very harmful. Gets canceled immediately. Everyone would be required to get one. <laughs> Oh my god. The man baby flavor. Tastes like Ugh. tastes like whale tail gin. Let me read another suggestion. It would be amazing if you I'm not kidding you, I'm reading this word for word off of the suggestions thread. It'd be amazing if you did something totally off the wall and unexpected, like run for president or even just the mayor. Obviously, it would be jokingly, but the thing is, at this point, you don't have to really leave home or do anything to run for office. You can sign up to do it and give your entire campaign platform through videos. Your campaign could just be intended as a statement on something, even just something like games or one of the things you react to in DSP Reacts. It doesn't even have to have anything outright political at all. You have a pretty good and sober view on things that's often missing in the world today. I think people would find it very interesting and entertaining. Plenty of people have run their own campaigns for office that were jokes or statements. Uh-huh. It doesn't have to be that. Do a wild card thing people don't expect that would surprise them. Unironically, a Dan is proposing that he runs for office. Unironically. Well. Also, the, the word sober, I wouldn't use that for Dark Side Phil. Official, starting tomorrow, I am starting my campaign for the President of the United States. All right, as an independent. You ready? If, if Trump and Biden can get elected, I don't know how I could possibly not be a viable candidate. I mean, one guy's barely alive and the other guy barely has a brain cell. So, if <laughs> either way, I, it, <clears throat> holy crap. Yeah, his slogan is going to be, we're going to put the dent back in president. Burnell 2028. And he's about as a good public speaker as Joe Biden. So go for it, champ. Go for it. Oh, my God. <clears throat> build back Burnell. <laughs> we're going to build a wall and keep the Argentinians out. And we're going to make Argentina pay for it. Or maybe Japan. Or maybe both. Wow. Original series phaser, if you want answers on the Xbox stuff, check out the last two podcasts. We went into massive detail about it there. No no point reiterating a third time when I've already went into detail twice. And I'm sure we'll be talking about this again next week when Phil Spencer does his presentation and says his piece and we find out what's really going on. I need to be in my 80s to be elected president. Well, I look like I'm in my 80s, so I'll, yeah. I'll dye my hair gray. And you're about as coherent, too. And I'll pass for it, I'm sure. Right? Let's face it. My face is way more bloated than Donald Trump's. Right? Sure. My balls are already hanging down to my kneecaps and clacking together like this. So what I'll do is... I'm not I'll sure about that one. hair in my ears, and I'll dye all my hair. Perfect. Your balls are in Catherine's purse. Right? Oh, did he say Donald Trump? Hold on, I want that one. Let's face it, my face is way more bloated than Donald Trump's. Donald Trump. <laughs> Perfect. Right? Donald. Color alert. Fill the public masturbate 8R 2024. Yeah, that, that's what we got. <laughs> the public masturbator 2024. Don't go island by Valentine's Day. I have to play straight story. Well, I'm playing straight story tonight. I don't mean dead and who doesn't have a brain cell wait what carliga says you know we don't even know who's who in that dish you just said really you don't know who's nearly dead and who doesn't have a brain cell you can't figure that out well dsp is both so uh go for it champ burnell 2024 2028 at this point because come on and it's gonna be him and kanye in the presidential debates <laughs> And they both kind of have the same policies, to be honest. <clears throat> I need to paint myself orange, too. There you go. I'll go with a different color. 
How about I go with like blue? I just paint my whole face blue. Blue. And then I'll be I'll be told that I'm a racist for being blue face. Hey, I'll shout told, out to Blueface, the rapper. It's a it's a discrimination against the blue man group. That how dare I wear blue face, right? <laughs> there we go. The Smurfs. There you blue go. Blue face, baby. Papa Smurf will be pissed at me. Sure. This is, by the way, this guy. This guy. Painting Nazi and saying that because the Jews ran rampant across the universe that they infected the whole universe with a necrovirus and he wants to turn on the ovens and burn all the Jews. Yep. Blue phase, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Den, Den Bover says, I should play Call of Duty. We are. We're playing Call of Duty on Saturday during the Super Bowl event. I'm going to do a session of it. Six million. That's an interesting number. Hmm. There you go. <laughs> I've already upset someone. Someone says, you're downplaying racial and ethnic stereotypes. I, I just have never learned anything. That's correct. As you know, I'm an incredible racist. I really hate those blue face people, let me tell you. I can't stand them. <laughs> if they would just go back... <laughs> To the Smurf lands they came Bro, from. Bro, stop it! Stop I'm it! For John Connor robot. John Old Connor, come with me if you want a tip. Can't the Sperminator. That's that's this guy. The Sperminator. Can't take it, man. The Snitchinator. That's actually how they called him back in the day. At some point. <laughs> Fucking people! I swear to God. <clears throat> Hi yai yai. Okay. I guess we should end the podcast, shouldn't we? Okay, at this point, I might just clip it for another level 1 experience. Say five things I've been doing wrong in the last 48 hours. Okay, let's see. What? I I played games poorly. Sure, that's funny. one. That's two. I snorted. That's three. My throat too much. Th absolutely. I ma told bad jokes. That is four. Ah, uh, that come on! You broke the combo on the last one. Everything else was a check, 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 check. You got to the last one, and it just didn't work out. Top five things I did wrong in the last 48 hours, according to my detractors. There you go. Oh, I, oh, come on. I thought he was being serious, and now we just ruined it completely. Play me out, Paul. Hey, that was almost a salute. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Very funny. A true and honest comedian. You should get a Netflix special. He should get somebody like Nathan Fielder to reach out to him for an actual special. And it's all going to be super ironic, like Nathan Fielder does it. But he's not going to understand. He is the perfect guy for Nathan. The perfect guy. Because Nathan is so deep in character, you couldn't even, like, it, it would completely go over his head. I think it's time to end the show. I think so, too. Who's the tallest person I remember seeing? I'm almost positive that when I was a kid, my parents took me to see the Harlem Globetrotters. Uh, and everyone there is tall as shit. Like, all the Globetrotters and the opposing team, too. You know, any basketball player is tall as fuck. Wait. And I, was, I remember sitting there and looking, like, oh, my God. Like, those guys are giants. Right? Wait, aren't the, the Harlem Globetrotters the dudes that just do the flips and stuff? They're not an actual basketball team, are they? Huh? All right, I think it is time uh, to end the show and to prepare for Baldur's Gate 3 chill fun today. I want to say thank you all. Great, great, relaxing show. To, as I knew it would be. I knew today would be a relaxing show, and I appreciate that. Um, remember, I'm not here tomorrow. When I return on Friday, um, very break. It won't be a super long break, but I'll take a brief break. Tomorrow. And a break. Okay. How are we sitting right now with the contribution side? Uh, I think it's not going to be very positive, and it's not very positive. This is a 25 from 1 Minute Man, a total of 41 out of 50. How was it during the podcast? 
It was a 41 out of 50. Oh, it's not going well. Somebody needs to take one for the team. Not the, the Harlem Globetrotters, the other team. The Rent and Den heads. But I guess that's all for me. As you know, I rarely stick around for the, the whatever the fuck this is. I don't even know if this is a video game. I've never seen a video game before. So I'm going to clock out now after uh, the, the Logan Super Chat reads out. So come back next time for another edition of the Swaycast. Bleh. <laughs> what a story, Mark. Alert. Fill on an episode of Nathan for you would be amazing. Nathan could save the business and stop the trolling. That would be incredible, dude. I love Nathan for you so much. I love it so much. I, I'm not a big fan of the... How was this other one called? the uh the rehearsal or whatever it was called when they they basically have a very scripted rehearsal for like real life events um I, I appreciate the gimmick but i'm not that much of a fan but nathan for you is a godlike show it's like a 20 out of 20 and big ups old book the black who says one minute man is fat cat prove me wrong well i can't prove you wrong at all because i i don't know who one minute man is i guess you can speculate it might as well be um I don't know, The Rock, because The Rock's been doing some stupid stuff lately, so why not? Let's just blame it on The Rock. Hashtag, we want Cody. And uh, with this one, thanks everybody for watching this episode. I am clocking out, and I hope you have a good one. Until next time, Yong.